following program is a BT Video Sports presentation <laughs> from Paul S. Hill Stadium in uh, Saco on the beautiful campus of Thornton Academy. My name is Roger Painshow. My partner once again this afternoon is Andy Poirier. And we are here to do what should be a great York County high school football game between the Golden Trojans of TA and the visiting Sanford Redskins. Andy and I will be right back with some pre-game uh, talk right after this commercial break. The band is on the field, Andy. The uh, visiting band is in the stands. This is homecoming day at TA. We've already been informed of various uh, activities. We'll be giving some results of those, float competitions and various other things. But of course, what we're here primarily to do today is talk about a football game that should be a good one and uh, Andy why don't you give us some particulars about what we can expect here today well Raj uh, it's good to be back with you this week our cameraman is Gary Savage and uh, well if it's anything any indication with Thornton and Sanford was like last year when it was a 9-7 thriller with Sanford coming back to win in the closing seconds and you're in for a real barn burner here this afternoon beautiful stadium we see at the 50 yard line we see the uh, Thornton Academy uh, emblem they've just placed, I believe, not too long ago. Wasn't there last time we, we came and did a ball game. And uh, basically, we have Sanford coming in with a record of 3-1 and one and Thornton being the home team at 4-0. and oh. Both teams fighting for a playoff spot. The so loser is going to, if Sanford loses, it, they'll be in rougher shape because they've already lost the bidder for 27 to nothing. And Thornton's record still unblemished. They've been the most impressive Class A team, I think, this year and most consistent team uh, right behind Biddeford. What this team matches up to be, a, uh, this ball game matches up to be a real fine fine one. Uh, not only the fact that it's, it is a rivalry and it's homecoming Saturday, Sanford would love nothing but to come in here and, and uh, beat Thornton at their own game. We mentioned uh, some of the key players in this ball game for maybe Sanford, the team we might not get to see very often. You'll be looking at number 72, Mark Boissonault, on the defensive and offensive line. He's their big gun. Last week against Edward Little, I believe he had about a dozen tackles, an interception, and a fumble recovery. So he had a pretty outstanding game. But he's been can real consistent all year. That's Mark Boissonault. He'll be wearing 72. Sanford also has some fine athletes. And I think the, the guy they're going to have to stop is number 11, Jason Sullivan, their fine end. Uh, number he'll be wearing number 11 he can steal the ball right out of your hands and Sean McCann number nine will be throwing a football to him also they have some backs and Danny LaPreeze and also uh, 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 Jeff LaPierre number 22 LaPreeze will be wearing 10 and don't be surprised if you see Pat Conley come in with uh, maybe some halfback options because I know LaPreeze can throw the football also he's throwing a touchdown pass this year and I saw I know LaPierre can throw the football LaPreeze is the pitcher in baseball so I know he can throw the ball and uh, I think Pat Conley is going to come in here with something uh, maybe some trick plays uh, you might see some a little bit of razzle dazzle from Sanford uh, it's usually a big game when two, two teams play Raj how about Thornton Academy well, we've seen them a couple of times and been very, very impressed. Uh, they're coming into this one 4-0. and and That's no surprise because this is a fine football team. They're 4-0. Bedford uh, was a winner. As we do this game, of course, it's a Saturday afternoon. You're watching this on either a Sunday morning or maybe a Monday afternoon. But uh, the information we have as we do the game is that Bitterford is coming off a big 34 to nothing win against Lewiston last night, Friday night. So they remain undefeated. And this Thornton team has given up only 14 points so far this season. Uh, only two touchdowns have been scored in four games. Now last week, the TA drew a bye. And um, so they're well rested. They should be in excellent physical condition coming into this game. We don't know of any uh, particular injury problems that they would have. We'll be looking for the I formation that they've run very successfully and all the options and so forth that come off that particular formation. Um, the um, One of the tri-captains is, of course, the quarterback, Dave Robinson. He's very effective, both uh, handing off the ball, running if he has to on the option, and is a fine passer. Uh, his main offensive weapons, uh, as far as pass receivers, we can look for him to throw to Tarbox and Gus. These two uh, young men have been uh, very effective as well. His running backs, basically he'll be looking for the power from uh, Bobby Giroux, who's a outstanding uh, fullback in this part of the state, in the, any part of the state. 
Bobby Giroux um, has been um, a real um, power source for the offense. And um, along with Giroux, we look for Bissonnette, um, Thea Redman. Uh, I'm just told that Thea Redman is out. Well, all right. We also have John Susie, number 34. Uh, B Robinson has a lot of weapons that he can go to. And I think more important than anything at this stage in the season is the confidence that Thornton is starting to exhibit game after game. We mentioned it when we did the South Portland contest. They were down seven to nothing in that one, but the final score was Thorn Academy 20 and South Portland seven. Uh, they came back with, with a lot of power and a lot of poise. And I think Dick Agresti can be very, very happy and very proud of this Thorn Academy team. So look for Robinson, Giroux, the uh, wideouts, and some extremely fine offensive linemen who make this thing go. Tebow, particularly, um, Nason, uh, just looking at some other names here, Fournier, Labby, a variety of people who do an excellent job in the line. Defensively, it speaks for itself. They've only given up 14 points to four Class A teams. So we're looking for um, poise, ready, very prepared, Thorn Academy team against a Sanford team that obviously wants to win and has to win. It has all the earmarks of uh, a top-notch York County High School football game. Yeah, Roger, uh, I'm going to have to correct myself on I, I told you Thayer Redmond might be out. He was out with a broken hand, but I see his left hand uh, either taped or with a, some kind of a cast on it. He might be just ready for this football game. He hurt himself in the Westbrook game, and I wasn't sure if he was coming back. I assumed he was still injured, but I see him out on the football field. We'll have to see how much playing time he gets. Another footnote for Sanford is they have their uh, fine uh, field goal kicker and also a, a pretty good tight end and Bob McCall back for their second game of the year. He hurt himself. He had a separated shoulder, I believe, some kind of a shoulder injury uh, before the season began, and he made his appearance as uh, Sanford defeated Edward Little at home last week, 14-8. to eight. So that might be give a big lift to uh, Sanford. If they're going to win, uh, they figure they're going to win with Bob McCall in the lineup. Well, I think we have set the stage for this one. The band, uh, Thorn Academy band, is filtering back up here into the stands after being on the field greeting the team as they made their appearance. The uh, captains are meeting on the field right now for the uh, traditional toss of the coin, determine who will be receiving and who will be kicking off. There's a tremendous crowd here this afternoon for homecoming. Obviously, the folks from Saco have turned out en masse, but we also have a lot of Sanford people. We have a lot of Biddeford people in the stands today. Uh, they've uh, got a real interest in this game. Obvi for obvious reasons, uh, Thorn Academy is a prime rival, and probably more so this year than in some more recent years because these two teams are headed on a collision course, I think. It's going to be the Tigers and the Golden Trojans uh, meeting perhaps more than once this season. Very exciting football being played in this part of the state right now. So I think we've uh, set the stage, uh, Andy. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with our kickoff to start this great game right after this commercial message. Back here at Paul S. Hill Stadium, we're getting ready for the playing of the national anthem. This is homecoming Saturday at TA, and it's a great day for a football game. For many years here at Thornton Academy, and he's presently retired. He's an avid supporter of the TA athletic program. We have a slightly overcast afternoon. Clouds are hovering above us, but uh, it's a good, crisp day, and in October, a beautiful day for a football game, and, and uh, we're looking forward to this one. Been looking forward to this one for a couple of weeks, in fact. Yeah, there were two ball games we talked about. It was T.A. Sanford and Olorchid Mesolonsky, and they're both back-to-back -back games. This week it's T.A. and Sanford. Next week uh, will be Olorchid Mesolonsky. We see Dave Robinson and uh, co-captain Mike Tarbox and Craig Tebow. 
having some kind of presentation in the bleaches as we see them climbing up in here now they will be presenting a football to them game ball I believe kind of a nice touch on homecoming Saturday as they come right into the stands right in front of you to make the presentation we talked about Thorn Academy and they have a lot of seniors this is a veteran club and I'll tell you they uh, one thing Dick Agresti has talked about is some great senior leadership on this team if it's one thing that he's gotten out of it it's been that this year, and it's a great undefeated season so far. And a lot of people have questioned maybe the line of Thornton. They've done a tremendous job and uh, to build a 4-0 record. And we mentioned Biddeford at 6-0. and uh, Thornton has to keep winning to keep up in that Bowie division. Toughest division in high school football, no question about it. As a presentation has been made, Thornton Academy to our left in their maroon and gold jerseys, Sanford to our right in their white and red. Sanford will be kicking off to Thornton Academy from right to left, and we have our national anthem. The Thornton band winds up the national anthem. We're set to play. Thornton will be facing with a, uh, going against a slight breeze into their face as the Sanford kicker, I believe it's Bob McCall, gets ready to tee it off at the 40. And for play-by-play -play action, here's Roger Pancho. Thank you, Andy. Yep, getting all set to go here. And we'll see who drops back deep for the uh, Golden Trojans. We expect to see Mr. Summer back there, number 12, and he is there. Danny Gamash, number 80. Jeff Sear is number 25. And we're just about set to go. And the kick is away. Danny Gamash way back there on just about the one yard line as he breaks out of there and keeps coming. Busts out beyond the 20. Not bad run back for Gamash as he gets out to the 21 yard line. TA will have a first and 10 at that spot. Very good kick by the way, all the way down to the one yard line. You don't see that very often in high school football. It's a, that's a goodie. Oh, we'll try to set the offense as uh, Thorn Academy comes out into their I formation. John Gus is split out wide on the left. This is number 30, Sickard, split out here on the right. Dave Robinson is your quarterback, calling signals, handing off to John Susi. And Susi is stopped right about the line of scrimmage. Mike Nolette, number 61, in on the tackle. Also, uh, Ted Cook, number 52. And we have a second and 11. Just about second and 11. So a short loss on that one. First carry by um, Susie. Second down. Same offensive set for T.A. Robinson will pass out of it or attempt to. He's going deep. Coming back for the pass and broken up. Broken up. Intended down here for Redmond, number 22. There are a lot of people there with him. And uh, Redmond was looking for a call, but didn't get one. Well, look for a minute like uh, Thayer Redmond and Chris Harry were having a jump ball contest for basketball because they were both standing on about the 45, jumping up and down, and Redmond didn't like the way he was being handled. 
but the official saw it a little differently. S third down and a long 10 passing situation. Third and 10 it is, and we have a flag on the play. Flag is dropped. We'll see what the call. It's five yards offside against Sanford. Moves the ball to the 26 yard line. Sets up a third down in about six. Whether that changes the uh, offensive plans of Thorn Academy, however, is doubtful. It's still third down and um, a strong yardage. And we will assume that Robinson is going to air it out one more time. But he doesn't, <laughs> which is typical for us. Hands it off inside, and he's very close to a first down. In fact, you have to believe he's got it, Andy. Yeah, it does look like he has it, and the official's out pointing, so give a six-yard pickup that time by Susie. Nice run up the middle that time. Look for a key matchup this afternoon when Thornton is on uh, offense is speedy John Gus. He's being guarded by Jason Sullivan. That's going to be quite a matchup. Uh, Gus with a lot of speed and Sullivan, one of the most talented players in Class A bas uh, football and basketball, by the way. He's only a junior, and he stands about 6'1", so Gus does give up some height. As they are, Sanford, I believe, has asked for a measurement. It looked like a first down by about the nose of the football. Uh, not the nose, but the whole football, and that's what it is. About the length of the football, Sanford just wanted to make sure and they have that right to do so. So with 10.54 uh, left in this first quarter, Thornton Academy gets their first first down and they'll be operating from their own 32-yard line. Robinson may be one of the better quarterbacks in Class A, leads them out of the huddle. And they go back to the same set that they've used so far through this first offensive series. John Susie breaks one tackle and is driven out of bounds as he crosses the 36. Watching the uh, Sanford defense on that one, Andy, everybody's playing very, very close to the line of scrimmage. Uh, defensive backs were no more than four or five yards back, assuming, I guess, or they, they as expect that uh, T.A. is going to run on the first down. They did, um, and they're playing that, that kind of defense. We'll see what they do here on second down if they loosen up a little bit, because we have a second down in about uh, seven, let's say, on the 36-yard line. But again, the defense stays very, very tight. Everybody close. They looking for double coverage down here on this side. But the ball carrier is Bobby Giroux. And Bobby will get maybe, oh, let's say three yards on that. Set up a third down and uh, maybe four. Yeah, third down and four. Uh, we mentioned they, uh, Susie's been running the ball for three times, and they've, been, they've just been deciding to run behind the blocking. Also, Bobby Giroux is an excellent blocker. But this brings up a third and four. We'll see if Dave wants to air it out this time. He's got Thayer Redmond on the right and Gus on the left. He ran on third down the last time. Now he's going to throw. And he has the receiver, and it's just out of the hands of Tarbox at about the 45-yard line. Uh, Tarbox cannot hang on to the ball, and we're going to set up a fourth down for um, T.A. They're on their own 39-yard line. And dropping back into punt formation is Bill Susie. Very fine punter. We've watched his work in the past and have enjoyed him very much. And this is the first punt of the afternoon as T.A. gets rid of the ball. Susie is rushed, and the uh, ball is down by Jason Sullivan at the Sanford 42-yard line. Good field position for the Redskins for their first possession. I'll tell you, Sanford's got that kind of offensive backfield where you don't know quite what to expect because, like I said, uh, Laprie's number 10. He's a very impressive player. Doesn't get a, a whole lot of rec recognition, but he, he can do a lot of things back there when he's in that backfield. And also LaPierre and, uh, well, Sullivan. We are we are talked about Sullivan. And on first down, Sean McCann decides to air it out. Throwing out to the flat, intended for Sullivan, incomplete. And we're going to see a second down in 10. I expect to see a lot more wide open type offense from Sanford. Uh, they've uh, featured that in the past and apparently have been doing that this season as well. Uh, where Thorn Academy tends to be a little bit more conservative, although uh, don't be uh, surprised if they uh, go into some uh, trick offense themselves. Coming out of the pro set, now they stay in it. Number 31 is uh, Chris Harry as he goes into in motion. The handoff and a fumble. 
And I believe Thorn Academy has recovered. Yes, indeed. Coming up with the ball is number 83, Eric Benson. And uh, T.A. has a first down and very impressive uh, fashion down here on the Sanford 43-yard line. And the first break of the game goes in, uh, in Thornton's favor. I believe that was LaPierre that the ball bounced out of his hands and Benson just quickly turned around and pounced on it as Thorn has the ball in the 43-yard line of Sanford and Robinson uh, leading out the charge. He hands off up the middle to Giroux, getting some tough yardage, getting a tough three yards inside the 40. They'll mark it probably at the 39. It'll bring up about a third and six, uh, second and six, excuse me. Well, the, this could be just a game of breaks this afternoon also, as we have a little over nine, nine minutes to go in this opening quarter, second possession of Thorn Academy. Look for Bobby Giroux to get those hard yards inside. That's his, uh, the bread and butter ball carrier for this team. And uh, if you need the, uh, those tough three, four yards, it'll be Giroux who'll get them. Robinson back to throw, heavy rush. He has John Gus and overthrows him. Ball is, goes out of bounds. He had Gus on the sidelines. Uh, Gus was being covered on the, that play by Jason Sullivan. And that'll set up a third down in about seven, let's say, third and six. They're at the 39-yard line. Good field position. The first break of the games, we said, uh, goes in um, T.A.'s favor. But now it's a question of whether they can uh, make something materialize out of this situation. He sends two men uh, split out here on the, on the right. Pitches out to uh, Susie, and a whole host of Sanford Redskins are there to meet him. And that is the end of that. And we'll set up a fourth down with a loss on the play of maybe a yard or so. Back to the 40-yard uh, line. Fourth down and about eight. Um, I would expect that uh, Bill Susie may come in in this situation and punt it out here and see if they can uh, bury Sanford deep. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Susie's very adept at this kind of thing. We saw him do it consistently against Portland when we did that game some time back. He gets it away, and it's going to get that good roll, and boy, this boy has done it time and time again for Thornton Academy, and it rolls dead right about the eight-yard line, and Billy Susie coming up with another great punt buries Sanford early. Well, from scrimmage, it's a 32-yard kick, but it means a lot more than that because if that ball rolls eight yards more downfield, then Sanford gets the ball at the 20-yard line. Now he's pinned uh, Sanford at their own, well, we're going to call it around eight-yard line. Eight minutes and six seconds. Sanford has it deep in their own territory. We saw what Susie did against uh, uh, Portland and uh, facing against the wind, which isn't blowing very hard right now, but he got a pretty good kick down there. Yep. Sure enough, Jason uh, Sullivan in the lineup, that's Sean McCann, your quarterback, and he's looking to throw. And he's being nailed, and the ball is loose. Picked up, touchdown! Eric Benson coming up with his second fumble recovery of the afternoon. He knocks uh, the ball out of the hands of the quarterback, Sean McCann, picks it up and rambles in for a quick six. Well, Eric Benson, we said a game of breaks, and that's just what Eric Benson's been doing. First time, he just pounced on the football. This time here, he decided to pick it up and run it in for the touchdown. So we're going to call it an eight yard as they're being, uh, McCann's being attended to. He got really hit hard by uh, Benson, who was a senior, a defensive end, number 83, six feet, 180 80 pounder. And he just uh, rocked McCann, then picked up the ball all in one motion and ran it in. Six nothing, it comes at 7.42 to go in the first quarter. TA on the board big, they've looked really good defensively. The kick by Tate is up and good. TA leads seven nothing on an eight yard fumble recovery. Touchdown run by uh, Eric Benson. Seven nothing rides, TA. And the band strikes up the school song. The fans go wild as they obviously should. It's a great way to start the day for TA. Seven zip. Well, we have seven minutes and 42 seconds left in the first quarter. I think this might be a good spot to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with the rest of the first quarter right after this. Well, Sanford is dropping back to receive the kickoff here, the second kickoff of this uh, game so far. As Thornton strikes on the fine work of Eric Benson. Two fumble recoveries already for that young man and a touchdown. 
The Golden Trojans are on top early. Kick is away and coming down at about the 22. Being run back by number 35, that's Jim Merrifield, a sophomore. Merrifield does fairly well, gets it out just beyond his own 35-yard line. And the Redskins will have a first down at that spot. That's a fairly good uh, field position. Let's see if Eric Benson can recover another fumble. <laughs> He is playing defensive end, of course, over on the, on the right-hand side. They run up the middle, however, with McCann handing off to his fullback for a very short yardage. Dennis Nason on the bottom of the pile. That was uh, Cody, the ball carrier. Guy Cody, number 26. We'll give him two yards and make it a second down and eight. Yeah, Dave Robinson uh, has got to be breathing a little bit of fresh air. Anytime the defense can score for you, it takes a little pressure off your offense also. And uh, Sanford is the type of team that I think throws the ball a lot more than they run. I think what they'd like to do is do it. They did the last two series of downs, and Stone might be caught with offsides. That's just what it is. I, Craig Tebow was just lined up about a – he figured he was going to play the left guard position of Sanford and didn't get away with it because he'll be called for offside, and that'll be five yards. A little over anxious that time. Uh, they can just taste getting inside that Sanford backfield. They've been able to do it with a lot of consistency. And we mentioned how the offense and defensive line of Thornton is really fired up this year, really playing some good ball. And uh, that's what they want to do. They want to put pressure on McCann so he doesn't get those passes off. Well, it's worked so far. Second down, and uh, we'll make it about three yards to go. Coming in motion is number 31. That was Chris Harry, but Lapierre is the ball carrier. And he will get a first down as he drives past the uh, midfield down to the, oh, about the 48-yard line. Good run by the junior, Jeff Lapierre. First and 10, and Sanford comes out very quickly to keep this drive moving here. John Garvin is split over here on this side. They go into a double slot. Set up with a one deep back, Santa Harry in uh, motion, and pitch out to the deep back. Flag goes down on the play as LaPierre is the ball carrier. And we'll see what the call is. It looks like uh, maybe a clipping call on uh, Sanford that time on the run. And that's exactly what it is. You saw the block coming at the 45 yard line, one of the lead blocks for Sanford. I'm not sure which one it is, so we won't point any fingers. One of the ball players just happened to clip a Thornton player. I believe it might have been on uh, clipping Tebow. As they are talking to Tebow now, that'll push him back. They'll definitely take that. It would bring up a second down at about seven or eight, but instead they're going to make it maybe first and 25. The ball is going to be at the Sanford 38-yard line, and that'll bring up a first down and. Uh, 25 yards to go, 5.34 to go in this first quarter. Okay, first and uh, 25 or 24. The ball is marked off from where the, uh, the infraction took place, so it really ended up being like a 14-yard uh, walk-off rather than 15. Anyway, McCann is back to throw, but we have another flag. The whistles are blowing, and it's going to be against Sanford again, Andy says. Sullivan. Offside, Jason Sullivan. I think he was lined up offside. Either that or he left a little early, but it's, it was thrown in that direction. And I saw Agresti pointing uh, over where Sullivan was standing. And uh, I don't know, uh, Conley might have been offside. He's, I think he's, he's almost in the Sanford backfield right now. The officials uh, this afternoon, and I do have them somewhere, Dave Allen, Steve Litsky, Jack Coyne, and Vasquez Amerigen. That's a great Portland name, I believe. Yep, been around for a long time. Five minutes left here in our first quarter. A little bit of motion in the Sanford backfield, and the flag goes down again. All of this is coming back as well, I believe. McCann's pass was uh, complete to LaPierre, but there was motion in the uh, Sanford uh, backfield, yeah, and they're calling it, and I think we're going back another five yards. 
<laughs> you know, Roger, if they keep throwing flags on Sanford, they're going to be snapping from Toby's Riven in about two minutes. As it stands now, it's going to bring up about a first and 30, or a 35, I believe. 4.52 left. They may just eat there at halftime if it stays open. <laughs> They're gonna be, yeah. One thing from Toby's driving. Okay. <laughs> well, it's still first down, boys and girls, believe it or not. Uh, we have a timeout on the field. Uh, uh, <laughs> our score here again is seven to nothing in favor of the Thorn Academy Golden Trojans uh, coming on the strength of Eric Benson's recovered fumble, picking the ball up and uh, walking into the end zone, really, after knocking uh, Sean McCann down. The extra point being put through by Paul Tate, and that's where we stand at this juncture in the ball game. And we've been watching Sanford now come up with three straight penalties called against them to the point where it is now first down and about 35 yards to go. Rather than throw it, which everybody expects, McCann hands off to Chris Harry, his senior running back. Harry gets to the 30, maybe a little beyond that, for a very short game. We'll say second down and, uh, well, it's hard to add them all up. About 31 yards, I guess. Second and 30, second and 31. Jason Sullivan, the split once again. We'll see that most of the afternoon on the double slot offense and nowhere to go. Driving up the middle that time and being stopped by Nason and Benson. Short gain will get him maybe a yard. Third down. Third down and a third down and 31 yards to go. Well, what do you do? Well, I guess you put it up in the air. I don't see what else they can do. I just settle for getting a punt and getting out of here. I... McCann calls signals, throws uh, to the flat, finds LaPierre. LaPierre is hit. There's another fumble, and there is another Thornton Academy recovery. We're going to try to get the number. Okay, we're told that it's Jim Fornia, number 66, who comes up with the fumble recovery, and that's three of them so far. Well, also, I saw 44, Jeff Mazervin. I'm not sure if he was the one who made the initial hit. I saw him get out of the pile first, so I'm not really going to say who, who did the hit, but I saw Mazerv come out of the lineup. Anyways, that's another, that's a third time now that They've knocked the ball out of Stanford. There goes Giroux up the middle, and he'll crash for about five yards uh, over the left guard, left tackle area. And it'll bring up a second down and about five with three minutes and counting to go in this first quarter. But that's the third time this Thornton defense has done that to Sanford. And uh, Pat Conley, between the flags and the fumbles, he's got to be really scratching his head and looking for some answers. Three fumbles in the first quarter, and Sanford has been uh, just bit by the old fumble bug, right? All three fumbles have been recovered by Thorne Academy, and Sanford is getting off to a, what we would say a slow start. John Susi is the ball carrier on the play. He'll get to the 20-yard line and gets racked up there. We've got a third down here and about uh, six yards to go, a third and four, rather, at the 20-yard line, right dead center on the 20. So at third and four, uh, we can expect a couple of plays here to try to pick up the four yards. Uh, we might even look for um, Robinson putting it up in the air at this spot. The Sanford defense plays up tight out of the I formation, and Robinson will throw. He throws to John Gus, and uh, the ball is just out of John's hands. It was just about at the uh, first down marker if had he been able to hang on to it, but it sets up a fourth down. Yeah, we have two really key matchups as Robinson is now 0 for 4. Ne neither team has completed a pass. Sanford's 0 for 1. I noticed that Sullivan is on Gus, and uh, he's doing a pretty good job on Gus. But then again, Gamash is doing a good job on Sullivan, and he hasn't been able to get open thus far. 
John Robinson, Dave Robinson rather, looked to throw again. Now he has to run out of there and is gonna be driven down inside the 20, but I think short of the first down. We'll see where they uh, set it up. Yeah, I think that's gonna end the, um, the offensive drive right there on the 19 yard line. Oh, Robinson looking to throw, had no receivers. There was a pretty good rush on him. He was forced out of the pocket, driven out of bounds on the Sanford side of the field at the 19-yard line. And the Redskins uh, dodge a bullet with one minute and uh, 40 seconds to go and counting. The Redskins will go back on offense and let's see if they can hang on to the ball this time. Their last three possessions have ended in fumbles, one of them resulting in the Thorn Academy score. LaPierre splits out on this side. Jason Sullivan, I believe, is on the other side. McCann hands off inside, and that goes nowhere. We'll give him uh, maybe a couple of yards. Guy Cody, number 26, trying to follow some inside blocking, but uh, the strength of the Thornton defense really is directly up the middle. And we've seen teams um, try time and time again to test the middle. And there's just nothing there, but they seem to want to try to do it week after week. And Thorn Academy is in effect saying, come on ahead. We love it. Try us up the middle. We'll just eat you up. And they do. So we have a second down and eight. Now Sullivan splits out over on this side. And he draws single coverage with Chris Summer. McCann is being chased. And that's Eric Benson, who makes another fine defensive play. Eric Benson coming up with a great tackle here. Never gave McCann a chance to really stop and set. It was a run and gun type of situation. Sullivan was pretty well covered as uh, he went deep and we've got a third down and 10. Yeah, excellent play by Benson. He, he could probably, uh, he's had a great senior year just in this ball game. There's no question about that. Uh, homecoming, uh, it's always a thing you remember when you make some big plays during a ball game, but when it's homecoming and against a top rival, then you really, uh, you really don't forget things like that. Just to mention, what they tried to do is pull Sullivan away from, I think, Gamash's coverage, send him on to the left side. As the first quarter is done now at Hill Stadium, and it's Thornton Academy 7, Sanford nothing. But what I'm about to say is they decided to test maybe Summers, and Jeff Lewis is out there, and, and uh, Sullivan just could not get open, Raj, and uh, McCann was uh, then sacked by, uh, uh, we mentioned, Eric Benson. Okay, Andy, we'll be back with our second quarter right after this commercial break. Well, we've got a quarter of this game uh, completed. Our score is Thorn Academy 7 and Sanford nothing. It certainly has been the Eric Benson show so far this afternoon as he's come, uh, recovered two fumbles and uh, came up with a big sack on this last play that uh, ended the first quarter. Uh, scored the TA uh, touchdown. As Andy said, it's a great way on the senior year to, uh, to finish your, your career on homecoming day. And of course there were other games left to play, but uh, this is one that Eric Benson will remember as well he should. Okay, McCann looking to throw, being rushed, gets it away and it just dropped. No other way to put it. In and out of the hands of Rick Cody, number 89, the senior. And uh, well, that's that. So we have a fourth down and 10. And Sanford will be punting, and uh, TA should get good field position. And uh, a lot of credit has to be given to Mike Tarbox, who really put a lot of pressure in, uh, on uh, the quarterback McCann that time, enabling him. But there was a good pass, and he just dropped it. And punting uh, will be. A Sanford player, I believe it. Is that Sullivan that's punting? Mm -hmm. Yes, the snap is a little high, but Sullivan will get it away in good shape, and he does. Danny Gamash is going to let it roll, and uh, it's going to die inside the 50-yard line. So that good field position we mentioned is certainly going to be there as uh, TA takes over at the Sanford 47-yard line. Now well, let's make no mistake, this is a good Sanford team that's playing here this afternoon. And a seven to nothing score is hardly the end of this one. Uh, we remember last year playing, doing this game at uh, Sanford and was one of the real uh, cliffhangers that we did all season, finishing nine to seven, a, a great, great game. One of the most exciting games we did. And this Sanford team is going to be heard of before this game is out. Make no doubt about that. 
Bobby Giroux is the ball carrier on the first down. He'll get inside the 45 to about the 44, second down and seven. Um, there are a lot of good athletes here on this Sanford Redskin ball club. And uh, before this thing is over, I'm sure we'll be calling their numbers uh, for something good that's happened, not just fumbles and that sort of stuff. Tell you, Roger, if first quarter, if first quarter is any indication, like we said, if if it's any indications, we have a timeout by Thornton Academy. Bring up a second down and about seven yards to go. Ball's on the 44 of Sanford. Uh, for any indication, and it seems to be the way the game was played last year with the big plays having uh, to decide the ball game. We've already had a big play in Eric Benson's fumble recovery. That's a big play. Anytime it's not a normal play that you'd see all the time. And uh, it just may be that way this afternoon. You know, you know, we could see a couple more big plays in this one to determine the outcome. But it's definitely early. And Pat Conley is an excellent coach who has a lot of things up his sleeve. And Sanford defense is uh, playing pretty well because the Thornton's uh, defense score, not their offense so far. So Sanford's defense come up tough, led by 72 Bussenolt, who, uh, who's been real sharp in the first quarter, making a lot of good key tackles on uh, Giroux and Susie. Yes, sir. Okay, let's see if TA can keep this offense moving here as they split two men on on either wing, go out of the I formation, and Dave Robinson is going to throw deep. He has a receiver down there, and it's a nice catch down there. Number 22, Thayer Redmond. And uh, Redmond is going to be down to the 29-yard line, I believe. Redmond just going down on a on a pattern where he just hooked back and the timing pattern, the ball is there in front of the defensive uh, back and the first down. So T.A. moves nicely here to the 29-yard line. Uh, they have been able to maintain the pressure against Sanford all afternoon so far. And the Redskins have had to try to react offensively. Handoff, uh, John Susi, good carry by Susi inside the 25. I think his forward progress will get him into about the 24-yard line. And we'll give him five yards on that. Set up a second down at five. Uh, Dick Agresti is shuffling in uh, halfbacks with uh, the play. Redmond is back into the lineup as Sickard comes out of it. And these two young men have been uh, bringing the plays in from the bench, from uh, the coaching staff. Gus and Redmond are both split on the left. Robinson hands off to Bobby Giroux, who uh, crosses up the whole Sanford defense and uh, carries half of it with him as he drives hard to the 15-yard line. Good run, Bobby Giroux. Yeah, Bobby Giroux has is, is got over 20, about 25 yards thus far in rushing, and the whole Sanford offense consists of 16 yards to total offense in that first quarter. So with uh, 9.40 to go and counting, Giroux has uh, just outrushed the whole Sanford's uh, production so far. Okay, Gus and Sickard now both split on the left. Robinson again handing off inside to Giroux. And this time the uh, line uh, stiffens up. We see number 51, John Valandri, number 52, Ted Cook uh, in there on the uh, tackle. It'll set up the second down and 10 with uh, no appreciable uh, gain or loss on the play. And again, uh, the uh, plays are being shuffled in from the bench. Redmond back into the lineup as Sickard leaves. Out of the straight eye formation once again. And Robinson will throw. He looks to this side. He has Redmond. Redmond has the goal line. Redmond is in for the touchdown. Thayer Redmond in for the six on a beautiful pass from Dave Robinson. A nice move back to the inside by Thayer Redmond. Left the defensive uh, back just about standing there. Drives in for the extra point and our or for the touchdown rather. And our score is 13 to nothing. Paul Tate is on to attempt the uh, conversion. 13 zip. It's up. It's good. 14 to nothing, Andy. And Thornton looks very, very good at this point in the game. Oh, excellent. Uh, 
Thea Redmond made a uh, move on Ryan O'Connell that left that young Sanford player with his chin strap hanging down at the five yard line and shaking his head like what happened? That was some kind of movie put on him to get in the end zone. You have a lot of credit to Redmond. Two receptions for Robinson's out of six. Both of them have been to Redmond in the second quarter, accounting for 23 yards. That time the hookup was for 10 yards TD at 8.45 to go in the second quarter. Tate with the kick, TA up 14-0 and the win is now at their backs. Well, if you write a script about homecoming day, I guess this is the way you would uh, do it. And you would want your your home team up with a 14 to nothing lead and everything going your way. And that's exactly what we're seeing here this afternoon. Getting ready for the kickoff. And it's away. Paul Tate getting the foot into the ball. A flag goes down, however. We may have had an offside. And I think we're going to be doing it all over again. Yep, that's what happened. So we'll kick it again. Bring the tee back to the 35-yard line this time and uh, try it one more time. Paul Tate is the kicker. And he has two points uh, to his credit this afternoon with the two conversions. 8.42 remaining in the second quarter. And uh, Thornton holding on to a very comfortable at this stage, very comfortable lead, 14 to nothing. Yeah, uh, still early, second quarter, 14 nothing. Sanford, very important game, more for Sanford than it is for Thornton because they've already lost one division game to Biddeford, and now they can't afford to lose another one to Thornton. It would set up a, a pretty good situation for Thornton and Biddeford would Sanford lose this ball game. Okay, kick is coming down here to number 10 and uh, he's going to bust out of there pretty good as Danny Laprise pretty good run back for Laprise and let's see where the referee uh, sets it down it'll be spotted at the 41 yard line this is good field position now for Thorn for Sanford rather they've had a couple of situations where field position wasn't bad but fumbles have just destroyed them and let's see if they can hang on to the ball and get some kind of offense going. Of course, uh, Thornton is uh, dedicated to exactly the opposite thing happening. Jason Sullivan is deep. The pass from McCann goes to Sullivan. McCann, uh, the pass is picked up, and that might have been a lateral, I guess, because he felt he had, uh, he had fumbled the ball. And let's see if the referees agree. I guess they do agree, right? Yeah, no whistles blew off the second uh, Sullivan, like a smart football play, he just picked it up. Well, they are bringing it back now. Incomplete pass. I, I saw the back judge. Not well, Usually they blow the whistle if they feel that he's been, uh, if the ball was thrown behind him. So if anything, that helps Thornton because of the fact that a few more seconds tick off the clock because <laughs> of the fumble, maybe like five seconds. But 8.09 to go at second half. In the first quarter, second quarter, excuse me, 14-0 TA. Ball is on the 40, 41-yard line of Sanford, and it'll bring up a second and 10, Raj. Okay, so it just goes as an incompleted pass, which is my first thought, but anyway. Harry goes in motion. McCann hands off, cross uh, counter to number 22, Jeff LaPierre. LaPierre gets some good yardage on that play. He'll get to very close to the 50-yard uh, line and uh, just short of it. And we'll say second, third down rather, and no, oh, a yard and a half maybe. So uh, Sanford is in a position to pick up another first down. They haven't had too many of those today, have they? Maybe one or one that, I'll, that I can recall. All right, third down and short yardage. That's 26, that's Cody, Guy Cody. And he'll get the first down with a little bit to spare as he drives inside to the old Thornton 44 yard line. Yeah, we'll give him an eight yard pickup that time running on the left side. So LaPierre and uh, Guy Cody that time rushing for about 16, 17 yards in conce concession uh, carries. And will bring up another first down. So back to back first downs, we have about 7.15 to go. Ball is on the Thornton Academy 43. TA's first real offensive drive of the afternoon. 
and Guy Cody again, number 26. But he's going to be racked up there by uh, Craig Tebow and company. We'll give him a couple of yards as he gets to the 41-yard line. Very active uh, linebackers for Thorn Academy. Bobby Giroux that time coming up with a tackle, helping out uh, on the play. You'll see a lot of movement. Craig Tebow also going back into a linebacker spot, but he'll come up and fill the gap as he's doing right now. McCann looks to throw, overthrows, and is almost intercepted. Out of the hands, I believe, of Danny Gamash. And just one of those things. <laughs> Gamash is usually a very sure-handed individual. We see him uh, returning punts. He just kind of catches it, runs in one fluent motion. Had he caught that, this ball game would be 20 to nothing right now because with Danny's speed and uh, with nobody on that side of the field for Sanford, no question about it. But the ball was thrown very hard and just went through the hands of uh, Gamash, who uh, probably had a better shot at it than anybody else for Sanford. Gamash plays the corner down on this side and is very effective. McCann throws, completes to Harry, and Harry is racked up by Bobby Giroux coming across and doing a really nice uh, job defensively on that uh, play because that Giroux missed him. Harry had a lot of room down there. We've got a fourth down and five. They're at the uh, TA 39 yard line, trailing 14 to nothing, but they are going to punt. And the TA will drop Gus and Gamash deep. And Sullivan gets it away. They're going to let this one go. Not Danny Gamash. He hasn't let one go all year. Picks it up and brings it back for a nice return to the 21-yard line. And TA will be very happy to have the ball of their own 21-yard line with 5.50 remaining. And a good spot for us to take a break. We'll be right back with the remainder of our first half right after this commercial message. Well, it's been a good show this afternoon, Andy, as Thon Academy has really controlled this game, both offensively and defensively, and uh, it's been a fun one to do so far. Dave Robinson hands off, and John Susie is caught in his own backfield. Uh, number 61 in on that tackle. Mike Nolette, a big senior and a good defensive play. Loss of uh, maybe three, almost four yards, say three yards back to the 18. Yeah, Mike Nolette, that's the second time he's been on a pretty big uh, play. Also a good defensive, uh, uh, one of the defensive front three or four that Sanford has. Also, Ted Cook, 52, plays a good solid game up front along with Boissonneau. Yeah, we've been calling those names this afternoon. They're consistent. Dave Robinson is going to throw. He's going deep. He's looking for Johnny Gus, and he overthrows him. Gus was covered down there by Jason Sullivan. Coming up to help was Mark Berard. But uh, Gus had the inside on Sullivan, and had the pass been just a little shorter, I think uh, John had a shot at a reception. But uh, it's an incompleted pass, long attempt, and we have a third down and 13. Uh, at first, I thought it was Guy Cody, but I saw a 28. We don't even have him listed on this roster up here, but somebody just rocked Robinson as he released that football. But nevertheless, we were unable to pick up the name because we don't have the name on the roster. And the ball handed up the middle and a good pickup, but not enough for the first down. As Bobby Giroux picking up uh, uh, about 10 yards, I believe. Nine or 10 yards, it'll bring up a fourth down with about 440 to go in this second quarter. A gain of eight yards, ball will be marked in the 27 yard line. That'll bring up a kicking situation for Bill Susi. Right, Bill has a fourth and four to work out of here. Laprise and Lapierre are the two boys uh, deep. And the kicks away, a nice punt by uh, Susi. It's going to be fielded by LaPierre, I believe, and he is tackled by a lot of Trojans getting down there. And that's uh, number 67, Goulet, getting in on the, initially on the tackle with a lot of other folks. The ball is spotted just inside the 50 yard line. Another good situation field position wise for Sanford. But they just haven't been able to uh, establish any kind of um, consistent offensive attack this afternoon uh, the passing has not been there 
And the uh, ground game uh, has sputtered off and on. They're going to look to throw again. They do. It's incomplete. Batted around. I think Thibault may have put his hand up and tack, tapped it away initially, but there was nothing there. Unless they really, and I think what they're trying to do, what they tried to do early is establish some kind of a pass uh, where they could probably, you know, get the Thornton linebackers to think more along the pass of, uh, plays of maybe to Garvin or to uh, Sullivan, but they haven't been able to really combine with the pass. So unless they do that, I really think the run is going to suffer a lot because uh, right now they haven't been able to do much with the pass. If only They haven't even completed a pass in five attempts. They try a counter, and that goes nowhere. Short gain, maybe a couple of yards. And uh, that Thornton uh, defense, as we've said before, up the middle is uh, very, very tough. Very tough to run against. Uh, even with the counters, trying to come back and work traps and so forth, it just, they're having a very difficult time. Um, we would expect that sooner or later they're going to have to try to run wide and uh, certainly be more consistent with the passing game. We have a third down now and about eight yards to go. With the one back offense, McCann is being rushed and hit and down, but he gets the pass away very nicely. That's Harry, the ball carrier, and Harry will get the first down. Eric Benson again coming up to clobber uh, quarterback Sean McCann. But to uh, McCann's credit, certainly, he got the pass away and gets the first down to the uh, TA 36. Well, I think Eric Benson is trying to make a float out of McCann because. Uh, I mean, he's been in McCann's back pocket more than uh, pickpockets in Boston would do on the subway. But it's a first down. Uh, give, give McCann a nice. Uh, there was, it was a screen set up to begin with, and I didn't think he had time to get the rid of the ball, but he just did. He found his man, gained the first down. As we have uh, running the football on the, on the left side is, I believe, number 34, and that would be. Uh, Okay, Tom Grondon, who wore, was wearing 32 before, decided to wear 34 to this game. He gained about three yards in the play. Ball's marked at the 33, second down and seven. We have a little over two minutes to go till halftime. Yeah, time is starting to become a bit of a factor as far as Sanford is concerned now as we come down to two minutes left. Uh, McCann is pitching out. LaPierre, number 22, is getting uh, racked up pretty good. Thibault is there. And uh, the ball is down at the 33-yard line. So now we have a third and uh, seven. So the uh, again, that the, the Sanford offense just shows no consistency. We've said it time and time again, and um, that certainly is their problem so far this afternoon. Time running down now. We have one minute and 28 seconds left, and the clock is running. 125. Time certainly a factor as uh, Thon tries to prevent the Redskins from negotiating these final 33 yards and keep them off the scoreboard, obviously. McCann rolling out. He's got a receiver. He's got Sullivan, and he overthrows him out of bounds. Ball coming down around the five yard line. Jason Sullivan splits out on just about every play, and sooner or later, if you try to lull the defense to sleep a little bit, you're going to try to get it down to him. But Chris Summer was there with him pretty well, and the McCann pass was uh, overthrown. Fourth down now. Yeah, Raj, though, though I believe Sanford is getting, you know, outplayed stat-wise maybe, and just, just by the look of the first half, if they were to cash in on a, on a score right here, you'd, you'd look at a one-touchdown ball game going into the third quarter, but they do have to get in first, and there's only a minute seven to go, and this is a fourth down and seven. So they're going to have to, first of all, make the first down before they get any other chances to uh, bring it in and look for a pass play, definitely, by McCann. As we see Ted Cook coming out of the lineup for Sanford. Uh, Landry talking to LaPrise and McCann. We see, I see LaPrise number 10 coming into the lineup, and I told you that he does throw the ball from the option. His, it would be a perfect chance to approve us right, right? <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, don't be surprised if you see LaPrise on a halfback option because I see him coming into the lineup. I know he can throw the football, 
He did it in a game earlier this year. I forgot who it was against. But between him and LaPierre, they do throw the football. They give you a lot of different looks. So it's going to be interesting if he decides to have McCann throw the ball because McCann hasn't really been throwing the ball very well. And he just may decide to uh, come to uh, pitch out to LaPrise and maybe throw it to Sullivan. I see Sullivan, first guy out of the huddle now. And we'll see what Pat Conley uh, has going for him here. McCann over the ball, over the center, calling signals and dropping back to throw. It's a fourth down. He has to make it here, and he overthrows his uh, receiver once again. That's Rick Cody. And that's that. Fourth down uh, goes by the board, and uh, Thorn Academy has possession once again with only a minute and three seconds left in our first half, and uh, T.A. will take over on the 33-yard line. You know, Andy, uh, uh, many years ago I taught in Sanford, not at Sanford High School, but at what is now defunct St. Ignatius High School, back in 62 uh, and I had a student there whose name was Roger LaPrise and I can't help but wonder if the LaPrise boy on the field now might not be related to uh, to that young man because uh, Roger LaPrise was a sensational athlete for St. Ignatius and uh, it would just figure to me at least to see uh, that this may very well even be his son on the field. I have no idea. This is just off the top of my head, but it would figure to me. Second down here in about six. Yeah, Dan's also an excellent pitcher. I saw, I saw him pitch against Thornton Academy, and he shut the door on him after Thornton had built up a lead. So he's a pretty good athlete. As rushing up the middle close to the first down is, I believe, Giroux. And he might be close to a first down. That might be five yards. And we'll see if they decide to measure as I see Sanford co-captain, maybe shy of the first down. Be third down, sure, but uh, more importantly, this this quarter, I was going to say is about to run out, but somebody calls timeout on the field. With only 15 seconds to go, this will definitely be the last play of the quarter. Yeah, what a great first half this has been for Thorn Academy. They've uh well, we've said it over and over again. I guess we'll just say it one more time. They've just completely dominated the game. Bobby Giroux with a nice run. It'll get T.A. the first down, but it should also end uh, our first half. Now we're down to three seconds left. T.A. is going to take a timeout, and I guess Dick Agresti says, well, guys, we've got three seconds. Why don't we just uh, see if we can uh, throw it down deep and see what happens? Not a bad idea. Certainly nothing to lose. Got a 14 to nothing lead. Things going your way. Uh, I guess that sounds like a, a reasonable call. He's talking to Dave Robinson now on the field. Uh, the stats are going to be very interesting, I'm sure, when Andy uh, gives them to us at a halftime because it's certainly been one way. Oh, they're always interesting when I give them to you because you never know what to expect. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Watching, uh, also, we see the Sanford High School band getting ready to come on the field. They um, will be doing their field show routine. And the Thorn Academy band, I'm sure, will do the same. That's always good fun. Well, TA looks like they may want to throw it. And I wouldn't, I can't imagine any other reason for t calling a timeout with three seconds left. And Dave Robinson says, well, I think I'd better run, and he does, and uh, he will be brought down. And that'll bring the uh, first half to a close. Well, it's been a good one. If you're a Thorn Academy fan, you've got to be very happy. And uh, this big crowd certainly is. One half of play is uh, now history, and I score Thorn Academy 14, Sanford High School nothing. And we'll be back with our halftime uh, show hopefully a guest that we have lined up, a lot of stats and some bands, and we'll be back with all of that right after this commercial break. Burner service, call them at 283-3363, or look for them in the yellow pages. Uh, Andy and I are standing here in the aisles, here in the middle of the stands at the Thorn Academy, as we get ready to do a little bit of halftime for you. We have a guest that uh, has been kind enough to agree to come on with us, a gentleman very well known in the Biddeford Soccer area for many, many years, and uh, former head coach here at Thorn Academy, uh, Mr. Bob Cody. 
And Bob and I go back uh, 150 years together, <laughs> and we've, uh, we're lucky enough to be able to, to ask Bob a couple of questions and get his feelings not only about this first half, but generally about what's been happening here at TA this year. Andy, I know you've always had one question you've always wanted to ask Bob Cody. Here's your opportunity. Yeah, how can I be a coach like you were? No, <laughs> that's not the question, Bob, I wanted to ask you. What I find amazing is for so many years, your coach, it won't count how many, but for so many years you coached St. Louis and you came over here to Thornton. What I want to know is when you got a chance to coach your sons, what went on like at home during the week, maybe after a game if somebody had a bad game or a good game, did it always, did it ever come home maybe t talk about it a little bit or did it stay on the field or what, you know, how, how would that work like a father coaching his son and more than one son I believe? Yeah, that's true, four of them. Uh, we enjoyed every moment of it. Uh, on the football field I was coach and at home I was dad. And uh, what happened on the football field stayed on the field. We generally had a pretty good rapport with, uh, with all of them, except for one. I picked on one a little bit more than the others. Bob, uh, I was at high school at uh, St. Louis. And of course, you're a graduate of St. Louis and came back and did some, uh, some coaching there and teaching there for several years before coming over to Thorn Academy. And I can remember in 1956 when you were coaching the uh, uh, St. Louis baseball team, they won the Telegram League Championship that year. And I don't know if the St. Louis team ever did that again. Uh, did you ever coach another baseball team that won the Telegram League Championship? No, I, I coached for three years. I coached baseball for three years. And we were fortunate to have a pretty good ball club in, in 56. And uh, we did win the Telegram League Championship. Probably not none of my doing. Oh, I, I disagree entirely because I sat on that bench all year. I used to do some reporting for the old journal in those days and used to report on the games. I, it was my senior year as well. And uh, I can remember one somebody coming up to Bob Cody and saying, well, he, he, we had gone about half the season without losing a game. And somebody said, well, you can't win them all, Bob. And Bob's comment was, why not? <laughs> and uh, I don't know if they did. I don't recall if we did win them all, but we won enough to win the, the championship that year. Bob, uh, it's been a couple of years now away from the football wars here at Thorn Academy. Do you miss it? Honestly, Roger, uh, there are times when I do. Uh, generally, the last two minutes of the half and towards the end of the ball game, when it's a close ball game, I really enjoyed those few moments. Otherwise, I enjoyed sitting in the bleachers and, and watching the ball game. Dick Agresti has done a wonderful job with this team. It's difficult, I think, we talked about it last year when he came on board, it's difficult taking over somebody else's team, and it takes, I think, a little time before it becomes, as a head coach, I think, your team. Uh, I think it's finally become Dick's team. Any comments uh, that you'd like to make on what you see with the job Dick Agresti's done here? No question, Dick has done a fine job. And I, uh, I think he has a good rapport with the kids. They enjoy playing for him. And uh, they've proven it this season. And I'm sure Dick will have many great years. You had a lot of great games against Biddeford High School in your many years here and in your years at St. Louis as well. Uh, it looks like this is going to be another one of those seasons where Thornton Academy, Biddeford High School, not only becomes the traditional game, but could be... Well, we're saying they may even end up playing twice this year. We'll be maybe looking at a state championship game. Your thoughts about that at this point? Well, it appears that our two best ball clubs going into this part, this stage of the season, are certainly uh, Thornton and, uh, and Biddeford. And I really look forward to a real fine ball game, and I, and I hope they do meet twice. Be great, wouldn't it? I certainly would. Andy? Yeah, uh, talking about Biddeford Thorn and other teams around the league, Bob, over the past maybe 20, 25 years, conditioning of the players, uh, maybe because of the weights or whatever, do you think it's changed the athlete now, maybe even the high school athlete, giving them maybe better better condition, better uh, just a better athlete? I think the weightlifting has made the kids stronger and probably quicker and faster. It certainly added a dimension to the ball game. I know kids today are a lot faster than they were in my time. Over the years, you've seen a lot, you've, you've coached a lot, you've seen a lot of great athletes. Two or three players that come to mind, maybe player-wise, either St. Louis or Thornton. Uh, there are many, many. Uh, certainly Ron Cody, who's coaching at, uh, at uh, Biddeford High School now, uh, is a great football player. We've had George Trudeau and Frankie Sears here at Thornton Academy, who, who certainly have made their marks. Uh, uh, there have been many. 
Uh, and uh, to name them all, it's very difficult. This Bobby Giroux, I think, has had a great first half, and he's a great two-way athlete here. From what you've seen of the game so far, Bob, uh, certainly Thorn Academy has controlled uh, this one this afternoon pretty much, and Thor uh, Sanford seems to be its own worst enemies with the fumbles and so forth. Uh, but we have a feeling Sanford is going to come back in the second half. They're a good ball club. Uh, what do you think? Well, this is my first uh, encounter with Sanford. Uh, I haven't seen him play until this time. Uh, they haven't been too potent. They haven't shown too much. Uh, I think def uh, Thornton has defensed them quite well. They forced some of those mistakes, uh, certainly to the aggressiveness of, of Thornton Academy. A good pass rush on one. and uh, Sanford has hit Thornton on a couple of counter plays, and that seems to have been the only successful play they've had. Uh, Sanford will need a break early in the, in the second half to get into this ball game. I feel. Bob, we're not going to hold you up anymore. We really thank you for coming by this afternoon. A real gentleman, a dear friend for many, many, many years, more in the years than we both want to admit. And uh, just great for you to come on board with us this afternoon on a homecoming day. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Bob. Thank you very much, Roger, Andy. Okay. We'll see you. Thank you. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back right after this commercial message. All righty, Andy and I are back up here in the booth, and well, I assume that Gary Savage, our cameraman, is going to be some, taking some pretty pictures of the band performing. And while he does that, again, we thank Bob Cody very much for helping us out here this afternoon. And uh, we'll let Andy give us some uh, first half statistics. Yeah, I didn't want to tell Bob Cody this, but yeah, I've admired Bob Cody. I remember being a little kid and going to watch the St. Louis games with Ron Cody being quarterback, and I was I was always impressed growing up with the job Bob Cody did at St. Louis High. But you mentioned 1956, and I didn't want to tell you, Roger, but I was born in 1957. I didn't want to make you guys feel a little, a little old. So we'll get to the stats of the game. First of all, Thorne Academy, 14-0 lead at halftime. They have 76 yards rushing. They're led by Bobby Giroux at 47 yards, and Susie has 19. Robinson has 11. That came on the last play of the uh, half. Total up to 76 yards. Passing-wise, uh, Robinson, 2 for 7 for 23 yards, both to Thayer Redmond. One TD pass, a 10-yard pass in the second quarter. Sanford, meanwhile, has 38 yards rushing, but they have three fumbles, and all three fumbles were lost. And one key fumble, which ended up being uh, the first touchdown, Eric Benson, about a five-yard fumble recovery pickup for a TD. But basically only 38 yards rushing, 16 of those by number 26. That's Guy Cody. As uh, Bob Cody said, no relation, I don't think. He said that they hurt, got hurt. Thornton only got hurt by two counter plays in the first half. Those were like two eight-yard runs, uh, one by Cody, both by Cody, rather. Passing-wise, McCann's had some trouble because he's had a lot of Thornton defenders in, their, in his face trying to throw the ball. He's one for eight for 10 yards. And total offense, 48 yards. And total offense for Thornton Academy, we'll call it 100. I've got it listed at 99 yards. So offensively, they're two times more potent in the first half than Sanford has been. The two touchdowns, the first touchdown came on a fumble recovery uh, by Eric Benson as he hit McCann, picked it up, and ran in from about three to five, five yards. Tate had to kick 7 nothing at 7.42 of the first quarter. Second quarter, Redmond, a 10-yard touchdown pass from Robinson. Uh, Tate the kick made it 14 nothing. That was at eight minutes and 45 seconds to go to half. And I agree with Bob Cody thoroughly that Sanford needs some kind of a big break early in this third quarter to really get back in this thing and put some pressure on Thornton Academy's offense. Very good, Andy. We'll be back with the wrap up of our halftime show right after this uh, commercial break. Well, we're watching the Thorn Academy band on the field as they uh, complete their halftime show here. And 
And they're looking very good. The team is coming back out on the field, I see. The Sanford High School team is uh, returning. Um, again, uh, thanks to Bob Cody. A lot of stories could be told about Bob Cody and his great years, both at uh, St. Louis and at Thorn Academy. He was, of course, a, a star athlete himself in the uh, late 40s, early 50s at um, St. Louis High School. Went on to Boston College, where he became a little All-American defensive player, a linebacker. Um, we're talking about it before the game, in fact. I was going over old times, Bob and I, and uh, he was uh, discussing how uh, he had played primarily defense uh, in his years at BC and uh, some of the teams that they used to play, including Clemson, Oklahoma, and a variety of other big name uh, college football teams. Came back from BC to uh, teach, of course, and coach at St. Louis. And uh, some years later, he moved over here to Thorne Academy where he completed his uh, coaching career and became a bit of a legend. So it was, uh, it was really nice to have Bob with us. We thank him again. I guess that wraps up our halftime show for this afternoon. The, it has been brought to you, of course, by Menard's Oil Burner Service. We thank uh, Leo Menard very much for sponsoring this spot for us. Please call Menard's Oil Burner Service at 283-3363 or look for them in the yellow pages. We'll be back with the kickoff of the uh, second half of this great game between Thorne and Sanford right after this break.
Well, we're just about ready to start the second half here. Before we do, we'd like to remind all you folks to uh, please drop in on our various sponsors, and you'll see their spots coming up during the course of uh, this telecast. And uh, we invite you to drop in and say hi and thank our our many and varied sponsors for bringing high school uh, football to you this season, and we're certainly happy to do it. I know our crew in Biddeford, which has been getting a lot of notoriety lately, I'm sure they're happy to do it too. Uh, Andy and I, of course, concentrate on Thorn Academy and Old Orchard Beach football games, and the Biddeford boys uh, take care of the Biddeford Tigers. Okay, the kick is away. Bob Cody said Sanford has got to come up with a break early or else they're in deep trouble, and uh, we tend to agree with them. The ball is uh, brought out to about the 33-yard uh, line. On the return that time was uh, Jim Merrifield, a sophomore, number 35. And Sanford will take over at that spot, first and 10. Jason Sullivan splits out as he usually does. LaPierre splits out on the right-hand side and the handoff is inside to LaPierre and he's got a little bit of room and uh, make that, I'm sorry, Guy Cody, number 26, my mistake. But uh, Cody makes a nice run, gets the ball out to the 44 and uh, that looks like a first down. Now they're looking at it again and uh, wait a minute, no, they haven't moved the change yet. Now the referee indicates it is a first down. So let's give 10 yards on the first uh, carry from scrimmage to a uh, guy, Cody, a good looking uh, senior running back. And Sanford is uh, got a little, uh, a little bit of a good start going for them here. Number nine is Sean McCann. He's the quarterback, and now we're going to have a five-yard penalty as uh, as number 22, LaPierre, goes up, just uh, jumps a little early. Yeah, a little too eager to hit the hole, and that's going to knock him back five yards, make it first and 15. The ball was set at about the 39-yard line of Sanford. We just begun the third quarter, 11-22 and counting in the third quarter. Score is Thornton 14 to nothing over Sanford on homecoming Saturday, a partly cloudy day. Kind of a nice afternoon for an October day. About 50 degrees maybe, 55 degrees on a nice homecoming Saturday. And it's even nicer as Thornton is leading this ball game 14-0. It's in their favor as quarterback McCann now brings Sanford out. He'll hand off second man through, and that's, I believe, Cody running behind uh, LaPierre's blocking. And he might get a couple, about three yards on the play. We're going to call it. Second down and 12, the ball will be on their own 42. Craig Tebow and Jeff Meserve coming up with the tackle. Just stuffing things up in the middle. Not much room there. So we've got a second down and 11 yards to go as uh, Sanford picks up about four. Those, uh, those little penalties can certainly be a momentum killer. You, know, they, you get a drive going, you're starting to look good, and then oops, a five yarder for some silly little infraction. The next thing you know, you're struggling to try to get back into things. And just as they're struggling now, LaPierre gets the handoff. Tempted counter goes nowhere, and we've got a third down now, and uh, those same 11 yards. Now it becomes a little more desperate. Sanford is probably going to have to put the ball up in the air. TA will be uh, looking for it. and. Uh, what looked like a good offensive drive starts to stall down a little bit. Let's see what uh, McCann decides to do here. He's got the play in from the bench. He splits uh, people out on both sides and goes back to throw. He's being rushed. He's being clobbered. There's a flag down as well, but a big defensive play coming up. Dennis Nason coming in. Uh, number 66, Fournier. Jim Fournier in on the tackle as well. But Nason gobbles him up. We have an initial call of illegal procedure against Sanford. That'll be declined. And it'll be a fourth down way back at the 37-yard uh, line. Yeah, McCann was taking just a little too long to set up. He was looking for Sullivan, who was being uh, guarded by Gamash. And Gamash has done an outstanding job this afternoon on Sullivan. Has not given him an inch to work. Sullivan also has played well on defense when he's defended against John Gus. So, uh, 
it'll bring up a fourth down and 17. The ball will be marked at around the 36 yard line. That's Sullivan gets a high snap, but gets the kickoff, a line drive kind of kick. Picking it up and fumble. Sanford's got the football. Chris Summer could not pick the ball up. Tried to trap hop it. That was Chris Summer at his own 44 yard line. Kind of a low kick trying to probably trap hop it. Didn't get the number of the Sanford player that recovered it, but I believe uh, 68 was in on it. That's Sean Preventer. He was one of the guys down there on the kicking team. But we don't know exactly who covered the football, but Sanford, that's one of the breaks maybe they're looking for. Ball's on the 43 of Thornton, and let's see if they can capitalize on this. That certainly is a break, no question about it. Excellent field position now. At the 43, Guy Cody being racked up. And we have a new quarterback. Uh, Andy points out number seven is Mark Berard, and he's a senior replacing McCann, apparently. Raj, don't forget, he's the guy who came in that game last year and threw that 22-yard touchdown pass to Legere. Or I don't know if it was 22. It was around 21, 18 yards in that area to Legere to win the ball game in the closing seconds. So this guy's got also a pistol for an arm. They figure they're not getting any production maybe out of McCann, unless he's hurt. I don't know if I see any indication on the sidelines if he is or not, but they're going to go with Barad now in the third quarter on this drive. Interesting. Let's see what Barad does. He's going to throw immediately, and it's intercepted. Tipped out of the hands by Danny LaPreeze, picked off by number 40, uh, Jeff Lewis, and a good-looking uh, linebacker. That'll set it up at the uh, well, defensive back, rather, for Jeff Lewis. Nice play, Jeff Lewis. Uh, first down for Thorn Academy at their own 32-yard line, and that eliminates that break that uh, came from the recovered fumble by Sanford. Uh, once again, Thorn Academy, opportunistic, stopping uh, the Sanford drive, really controlling the situation here in this point in the game. Handoff is to John Susi, and uh, the uh, eye back is going to move it to the 35-yard line, exactly at the 35 and go oh, second and seven. Yeah, Rod, five turnovers in the ball game, one interception, four fumbles, and all of them have been turned over. Three fumble recoveries by Thornton, one fumble recovery by Sanford, and interception by Thornton. So turnovers are looming uh, kind of large, but they're kind of canceling each other out right now as both teams are getting over. Long pass. Nope. Oh, just out of the extra arms of uh, Thayer Redmond at about the 40-yard line as Robinson teed that one up about 20, 25 yards. And guarding him that time was number 31, Chris Harry. And it'll bring up a third down and seven, 7.36 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, he had uh, John Gus deep on the other side, too, and uh, Gus was being a little more loosely covered, I thought, by Jason Sullivan. Uh, there may be something, a possibility out there, although we understand that Sullivan is considered their best defensive back. Robinson will throw in that direction, and he will complete it. Now the ball is dropped. We may have a fumble called on this situation, and uh, let's see what the referee calls. It is Sanford ball, yes, indeed. It's a completion and a fumble following the hit. Out of the hands of Mike Tarbox. Picked up by Sanford at the uh, Thorn Academy 44 yard line. And this is a hot potato we're dealing with now. Nobody seems to want to hang on to the ball. 7.23 remaining in the third quarter. Our score, of course, remains 14 to nothing. And Sanford has possession. And they're at the uh, 44 yard line. Well, Thorn Academy second fumble early on in this third quarter. And uh, Sanford now, last time they took over the 43, then it was turned over again on interception. Now they get it on their own, on the Thornton Academy, 44. As, as Roger said, the ball was caught by Tarbox as he went down. It was kind of a judgment call whether he had the ball or not, but the referees ruled it. So that's the way it'll stay. Sanford's got the football. We'll see who comes out of the huddle. I believe that's number seven, Barad will continue to be the quarterback. So Barad and McCann alternated all year long last year also. As Barad goes back to pass, he's looking for Sullivan. He's being hounded by and dragged down by number, I believe it's 56, Dennis Nason, or 66, excuse me. That's Jim Fournier, it looked like 56, but it was Fournier coming up with the big play. So he'll lose two yards on the play, second and 10. He was looking for Sullivan, but Sullivan is just not getting open, Rudge. A lot of sacks this afternoon by the uh, Thornton defense coming in and uh, hounding uh, the uh, Sanford quarterbacks. Whether it's Barard or McCann, doesn't seem to make much difference. 
uh, Fournier in on this play. We've seen Benson have an outstanding first half of TA. And uh, if you can't run, that's one thing. But if you can't, don't have enough time to throw either, then you're really in trouble. Long pass to Sullivan. Caught by Jason Sullivan and brought down at the 20-yard line. Inside the 20, let's make it the 17-yard line. Sooner or later, no matter how well the guy is covered, you're going to have to throw in coverage and figure he's going to come down with the football because I saw him against Chevres this year, and he pulled two two catches out of the out of the Chevres defender's hands that were labeled for the Chevres player, and he ended up getting the winning touchdown that way, and he did score on a long touchdown pass, but that set the second touchdown up in that game. Sooner or later, it doesn't matter how well the guy is covered. you got to you got to throw it at him because he's got his height to use as uh, an advantage. That time, he showed you what he could do with his height. Indeed, and he was well covered. Chris Summer was there with him, but... A good athlete will come through. Barad again being hounded and dropped. Um, coming around from the other side once again, Eric Benson, number 83, Bobby Giroux down there. Um, uh, Jeff Meserve also in on the play. And uh, we have a boy that's down for Sanford. But there's a loss uh, on that play. Well, let's see where they spot it. No, they'll probably pick up a yard. That's a second down now in about uh, 17. Mike Nolette, I'm being told, is the boy that's down for uh, Sanford. Yeah, we see his number now, number 61. He's a senior and uh, a good ball player. Ball is spotted at the 14-yard line, and uh, Sanford will uh, have possession there. But again, quarterback... In this case, not having time to set up the throw. Uh, it's a run and gun situation, uh, but the uh, quarterback just has no time. Barad is going to stay in the quarterback, apparently. Well, I think also what Pat Conley is thinking about now, that Thornton rush is really, is really hectic on the quarterback. And I think Barad may be a better scrambler than McCann. McCann's just sort of sitting in the pocket and getting hit. Barad at least is, is running and scattering a little bit, and uh, he may be picking up two or three or four yards. Uh, when he does, you know, roll to his right, he may be, uh, he did put that ball up to Sullivan, but Sullivan, gave Sullivan the credit, he came up with a fine catch that time over the top of, I believe, uh, I, I'm not sure if it was Summer that was guarding him, it was Summer, 5.41 to go, second down and 17, to, well, we'll call it about 15, you know, okay, we'll take a break and be right back for the remaining of the third quarter, 5.41 left, Thornton 14, Sanford nothing, we'll be back after this break. Well, if uh, Sanford can put something on the board here, as Andy just mentioned to me, uh, this could still be a very interesting game, and there was no question of that. The third quarter has been pretty much controlled by the Sanford offense, uh, recovering fumbles and so forth, stopping uh, Thornton from doing what they would like to do. And with the ball on the 14-yard line, we have a second and seven, and it's certainly the best uh, uh, situation that the Redskins have enjoyed uh, this afternoon. Well, we have uh, Sullivan split out wide, and... Uh, Summer is back, is uh, covering him. Now Danny Laprise also goes out there. The pass is down inside. He was looking for uh, Sullivan cutting over the middle, and they've called a holding penalty, I believe, against Thorn Academy. Yeah, number 38, I believe Rick Bissonnette. I'm not sure, but it looked like when Sullivan was trying to cut in the middle to get uh, kind of a cut-in pad, and uh, Bissonnette may have held him up just a hair, and I think that's what the call is going to be. And you could see it because... Uh, Bissonnet just looked around like saying, you're not going to throw the flag on me. And all of a sudden, the official decided to throw the flag. So kind of made it look innocent. I think it was number 38, uh, Rick Bissonnet. Yeah, Sullivan coming back, uh, cutting to the inside. Those are the tough ones. T tough passes uh, you know, can get very congested in the middle. And um, anybody who says, yes, I'll cut in, in down in the middle and, uh, and go for the pass uh, has a lot of guts. Well, the ball is spot, uh, spotted now down on the seven-yard line. This uh, sets up a first and goal, and uh, this is certainly the Sanford opportunity of the day. 
McCann pitching out to Harry, number 31. He'll get close. I'd say about down to the three yard line. Uh, that's not a bad call. We were saying in the first half that uh, Sanford had to run. They certainly had to start looking to run wide. And that pitch out uh, allowed that to happen just a little bit. Second down now and, uh, and three yards from the goal line. Second and goal. Sullivan checks out of the game. And uh, everybody in tight. Looks like they're going to go up the middle. They try that. And that ball carrier is hit and dragged and pushed back. Now we have a fumble. And it is Thornton Academy ball. The recovery is made at the five yard line. And I think that is Eric Benson with the fumble recovery again, Andy. Well, he's just making this a hobby and a living right now. Uh, Eric Benson has decided to take fumble recovery as his hobby. And, uh, and we see a little bit of headbutting on the sidelines going on, a la Jim McMahon. I'm wondering if the headbands go along with it. But that time, I think Eric Benson butted heads with one of the Sanford players because uh, that was 34 on the carry. And that's Mr. Grondon who fumbled this time. And a big turnover and a big break again for the Thornton defense led by Eric Benson. And that's got to be Eric's third fumble recovery. And I see Pat Conley uh, uh, disfavoring this thing. He doesn't really agree with what happened. He probably figured that I thought they were going to blow the whistle because it looked like he was in a grasp and uh, the, the forward motion wasn't going to go anyway. It was just being pulled backwards. But evidently, I think that's what Pat Conley is arguing also. But nevertheless, it stands T.A. ball in their own four-yard line. Yeah, the whistle just never blew. A handoff inside. Robinson to Bobby Giroux. You, when you need those tough yards up the middle to get yourself away from the shadow of your own goal post, which is the Thorn situation, you hand it off to Bobby Giroux. Uh, and the ball is brought out to the 10-yard line. Uh, interesting, in talking to Bob Cody at halftime, it, and he asked who were some of the great players that he had uh, coached over the years. He mentioned a couple of people, said it was difficult to name them all, and obviously it is because he saw so many of them. But one of the names that he did mention was Bobby Giroux, the young man on this team this year. John Susi is the ball carrier on a second down, and John will get out to the 15 or close to it, and also close to a first down. We'll see where the uh, ball is spotted. It's over the 15-yard line. And I think we're going to have to measure this one. But uh, T.A. gets it out of uh, dangerous ground, certainly. And now it's called the first down. So there is no measurement. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. And uh, the Thornton Academy team recovering fumbles and interceptions and all the rest have just made life very, very difficult on Sanford today. Yeah, they have. And the big players is what's done it thus far, the fumble recoveries. And if we have to pick an 11th player today, Eric Benson is definitely a front runner. I mean, he's got to be a shoe in right now for this 11th players. This whole Thornton Academy defensive squad. Now I think we have another fumble, and Sanford is saying, we got it. And we see about five hands pointed that way, but the ones with the stripes are the ones that count. We'll have to see if their arms go up, pointing in that direction. Yes, it is. So another turnover, I'm just talking about fumble, and that referee was right down his hands and knees looking at it, and pulling out of the pile might be Guy Cody, I believe. 26, coming out of that pile, and it is Guy Cody. So this is a game of uh, turnovers, it seems like, thus far. And sooner or later, Sanford's gonna have to cash in, or these turnovers aren't gonna be a whole heck of a lot of good when they're reading the Sunday Main Herald tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, this, this fumbling is something we used to see a lot of from Thorn Academy last year. And uh, so far uh, this season, we hadn't seen much of it, but now we have three of them. Nice counter and uh, really racked up. Lewis and uh, Giroux coming up. Meserve, rather, make that Meserve and, uh, and Bobby Giroux stopping up that, uh, that intended reverse loss of let's say uh, three yards second and 13. I'll tell you one thing though I like the call it yeah, was a, it was it a did. good call it was an excellent call like a re sort of a reverse inside reverse but that time the pursuit of the Thornton linebackers is just so tremendous on the quarterback that I think they accidentally ran right into the ball carrier and just nailed them as led by Giroux and as you said Meserve and Lewis. Second down in motion LaPierre 
Barad throws to him, and now LaPierre looks to throw himself. He still has that in mind, finds a little bit of running room, and is upended at about the 13-yard line by Bobby Giroux again, coming up and stopping that thing. They've, they've uh, had that in mind, I think, a couple of times uh, in the game so far. It hasn't clicked. This is the first time, however, where the halfback really looked as though he wanted to throw, but the defense was good. We said earlier when, La, when LaPierre is in the lineup and LaPriest look for them to throw, and I know LaPierre, I believe, threw a touchdown pass last week against Edward Little. I'm not, I'm pretty sure he did in that ball game, and uh, that time I, th I believe he was looking for a receiver downfield but couldn't find anybody. He ended up getting about six yards on the game. Yes, he did. We have a minute and 20 left here in the third quarter, running down. And a third down. We're down on about the 13-yard line. This is still very dangerous territory as far as Thornton is concerned. Barad looks to throw, does so, has his receiver, and uh, he'll be down inside the five-yard line. That looked like uh, Mike Ralston, a junior number 82. Inside the five, sets up a first down. And we'll spot the ball at the uh, four, I believe. Yep, let's make it about the three-yard line. Okay. So we're down to the three-yard line again. The last time they were here, if you recall, uh, there was another fumble recovery by uh, Thorne Academy's Eric Benson. Uh, let's see if the Redskins can turn things around this time. They try the center of the line. They're close, and they are in for the touchdown. I believe that is Guy Cody, number 26, in for the TD for Sanford. Well, we have 47 seconds left in the third quarter, and Sanford finally gets on the board. The breaks have finally gone their way. There have been enough of them going against them, certainly, today. Our score is 14 to 6 now. McCall is in to attempt the point after. McCall is, a, is usually, a, has been an outstanding uh, kicker. He can really nail some long field goals. Just to have his leg in there after his injury, as the kick is good, not the strongest kick, but he got it up. And McCall was injured, as we said last year, uh, preseason, but he puts the ball through the uprights. And the score is 14-7 with 47 seconds to go in this third quarter. So Sanford uh, capitalized on a Thornton Academy fumble. And you said, so we, like we said, sooner or later they're going to have to or it's not going to really mean a, a spill of beans because they had, Thornton has fumbled three times and Sanford has failed to capitalize. And that's the second time now in this quarter they've been inside the five and they've fumbled the ball away. But led by... Uh, uh, Guy Cody, you've got to give a lot of credit to number seven, Mark Barad, who's come in here and taken charge of this ball club, and he's given a new look to this uh, Sanford offense, and Thornton's going to have to come up big now as have a 14-7 to seven lead, and I believe they've only allowed up to this game only 14 points in the first four games, 21 in, the, in five games. That still averages out to only four points against the ball game, but we still have one quarter of football left. And the kick is away. And the picking up the ball is uh, Jeff Lewis. He has a little room, and now he's being uh, stopped up. But he will get beyond the 30-yard line. LaPierre comes in for the tackle on Lewis, who gets to the 31. First and 10 for um, Thorne Academy. While well, we were told at halftime by Bob Cody that if Sanford were to get, was to get back into this thing, they, uh, they had to do it by virtue of some kind of a break. And well, they had enough of them. They finally converted on one, and they are back into this ball game. John Susi breaks a tackle, has a little room, driven out of bounds finally by Laprise. But uh, John will get the first down on that play, driving out to the 42 yard line. And that's uh, the good field position that TA has lacked so far in the uh, third quarter. It's spotted at the 43. First and 10 with 18 seconds remaining. And uh, with the ball going out of bounds, of course, it stopped the clock. Dave Robinson at uh, quarterback, handing off to Bob Giroux, who has a hole. And Giroux slips and falls, but he crosses the 50-yard line. And uh, he could have had, I think, a few more had he been able to keep his feet. 
but a good run anyway for Bobby Giroux right at the 50 yard line second down and about three so what they needed was a pretty good drive and uh, there's two good runs by Giroux and Susie but that'll end the quarter at the end of three quarters of play it's Thorn Academy 14 Sanford 7 we'll be back for the fourth quarter after after this break Okay, back here to start the fourth quarter. Thorn Academy in possession, starting to show a little bit of offense here in the second half. The handoff goes to John Susie, and John is hit hard as he gets back just about to the line of scrimmage. He'll end up losing uh, maybe a yard or a little bit more on that play and set up a third down and let's say, uh, oh, third and four. Nice attempt by Susie, but a good defensive play by Sanford. Third down. Sanford Club really fired up right now, and that'll bring up a big third and five with 11.30 to go in this fourth quarter. Robinson calling signals. Ball at their own 48. They need five. Robinson looks past, and he looks to Redmond cutting in. He makes a fine catch, and they're going to rule it a catch at the 40-yard line going down, and that's a third catch of the afternoon for Thayer Redmond, and that's what they needed was a big play on third down with Sanford's defense really pumped up, and it kind of... Uh, just loosens things up for the offense here. You can see the everybody uh, going a sigh of relief as the ball is now in the Sanford 40-yard line. That kind of breaks Sanford's momentum on the defense shortly. It sure does, and it again shows the kind of poise that we were talking about before the game that this uh, Thornton Academy team has. Uh, there's a flag that goes down. I believe that we may have uh, 12 men on the field for Sanford. Number 61, uh, Mike Nolette, uh, scrambling, trying to get off before the uh, snap and didn't make it. I believe that's the call. Well, when you can't stop him with 11, Rod, you try to sneak that 12 guy out there. There's no 12th man award, by the way. There's only an 11 player award. And that's exactly what it is. A legal procedure, Roger, call that right. And that'll be five yards. That'll be a first and five and the ball well, as they're talking to Robinson, the ball will be marked on about the 45-yard line, 35-yard uh, line, just inside the 35. 11:01 exactly to go. Stop clock. First down and five for Thorn. We mentioned they're up 14-7. I, I really figure a very important set of downs right now for Thorn, with, with Sanford showing a little bit of momentum, Roger, on their side. Yes, indeed. This is a very important set of downs for uh, TA. Well, with a first and five, and uh, this kind of field position, it certainly allows the offense uh, a lot of choices here. Uh, you could go for the bundle right here on this first down play, going deep. You can try some uh, razzle-dazzle, a uh, lot of possibilities. They decide to hand it inside, however, to Bobby Giroux. And uh, good defense by uh, Sanford that time. Mark uh, Boissonneau, the big number 72, boy that we uh, talked about pre-game coming up with the stop uh, no gain and we'll set it at the same spot and make it a second down and five once again they're at the 34 yard line John Gus splitting out wide to the left Dave Robinson is of course calling signals Giroux and Susie are deep his backs and he's going deep for Gus Gus looks over one shoulder and then he looks over the other and the pass goes incomplete. Uh, just a little bit of a mix-up as to which way I think he was supposed to cut on that uh, pass play. We now have a third down and five, and things uh, starting to bog down a little bit. Yeah, Sullivan has been covering, uh, we mentioned Gus, most of the afternoon or all afternoon. Gus has failed to come up with a catch this afternoon. Redman has three catches, and Tarbox has the other, but Tarbox fumbled on his uh, reception. That gave Sanford back the ball. It's a third down and five. Robinson rolls out, fakes a handoff, goes. And that's Tarbox. Tarbox gets away from a defender. He may be going in, and it's a Thorn Academy score. 
34-yard touchdown reception from Dave Robinson, who I believe Mike Tarbox, a senior tri-captain, got away from a couple Sanford defenders. One of them is still laid down there on about the 20-yard line. And the big play was needed, big series of downs, and the two senior tri-captain, two of the senior tri-captains connected on the big touchdown play. It'll go for 35 yards. Well, that one really um, sets up Thornton in fine shape now with 10 minutes left in our fourth quarter as they bounce out on top now, 20 to seven. Tarbox made the reception, he was all alone. When the defensive back came up to make the tackle, he was able to uh, break through that, and then it was uh, just a race to the goal line with Mike winning that fairly easily, and Thorn Academy puts six points up on the board and jumps out now to a 20 to seven lead. We are pausing momentarily before the attempt for the extra point because there is a Sanford player uh, down on the field, on the other side of the field, and they're uh, looking him over right now. And uh, a lot of folks down there huddled around the uh, Sanford ball player who is still down. Well, uh, Thorn Academy reacts very well. We said that also at the beginning of the game. This is a really a very poised team. They have a lot of confidence. And they're getting a lot of good senior leadership. And uh, when things start to go uh, adversely, they just pull themselves together and come back uh, with the kind of offense, kind of type of play that you expect from a championship caliber team. And I think that this certainly is a championship caliber team. Now, that doesn't mean they're gonna win it all, but uh, so far nobody has beaten them. And until somebody does, uh, I have to believe that uh, TA is going a long, long way this season. Now we're ready for the uh, attempt for the extra point. Tate puts it up, and it is good. It looked like it was drifting wide, but it uh, gets in there, and TA leads it 21 to seven. We'll be back with the kickoff, uh, just another couple of minutes. Andy, uh, they do have a way of coming back at you. They just don't give up, do they? No, like you said, they have all the ingredients it takes to get to a state championship football team if they keep playing the way they have been this year. Uh, maybe Biddeford only stands in their way. We, we don't know. We know they have Lewis and I believe left to play next on their schedule, Deering and Biddeford, and they do have to play every ball game like it is a very important one, and things can happen in high school football. We've seen some very strange things happen. But uh, judge, judging by what we've seen and what they've done this year, they've only, like we said, they've only given up, I believe, 21 points, this being their fifth game. And that, as we said, their defense is like four points a game allowed. That's tremendous when you look at, uh, I don't really care who you're playing, what caliber teams you're playing. This team has played some good ball clubs also in South Portland, Edward Little, and now Sanford. As we have a fumble, and they're going to rule it dead because the Sanford players' knees hit the turf, and in high school football, cannot advance it once your knees are down. So it'll be at the 30 or 31 yard line. Sanford has uh, 9.58 to work, and they need two scores just to get back in this thing. Yeah, and the work is certainly cut out for them now. That was uh, Mike Ralston, number 82, who fielded the ball, and then uh, his knee touched to end it there. Ball is spotted at the 31 yard line, so it'll be first and 10 from the Redskins as they take over. Um, with 9.40 and the clock running, we will assume that uh, Sanford is going to be uh, airing the ball out. Barad is the quarterback, number seven, and he's gonna go deep. And he's overthrown his intended receiver. Uh, Danny Gamash was down there, and uh, Gamash was considerably closer to the ball than LaPierre. So it's just a long incompletion, and we'll set up a second down and 10. And we'll see if they decide to come back on this side of the field to Sullivan, who seems to be a more potent weapon. Yeah, and Barad was the player that was injured on the touchdown reception from Robinson to Tarabox, but he's okay now. He's in the lineup, done a pretty good job with the offense thus far. Uh, what I'm impressed with the most is the two catches by Redmond and the three catches, but the two where they both advance the footballs. Barad turns around. He's looking for Sullivan deep. He might have him. 
Ball tipped just at the last second on a nice defensive play by Chris Summer just inside the 35 yard line. And that ball was just a few inches away from being uh, 21 to 14. But give Summer a lot of credit for sticking with that one, tipping the ball just beyond the outstretched hands of Sullivan. What I was about to say was the not, was the uh, runs after those pass completions to Redmond at the five, and then Tarbox caught it around the 25 or 20 yard line. The runs that were made after those catches to me were more impressive than the catches themselves. Yeah, they were. 9-19 now left, and we have a third down and 10. Two long pass attempts by uh, Sanford have uh, gone astray, and they're gonna try number three right here. And this one is caught. Nice completion by number 22, Jeff LaPierre. He bobbled the ball for just a second, but came up with it and is down at the 50-yard uh, line. We'll make it the 49. So that's a first down, and the, the long pass attempt finally works for Sanford. And they keep their drive going. Clock is still running, however, and coming down to about nine minutes left now as Barard leads his... Uh, Redskins out. Resets his backfield. Puts Harry in motion. Hands off to a counter, and that's going to be racked up at the line of scrimmage. No gain at all there. Giroux coming up. Nason coming up, stopping uh, LaPierre. So it'll set up a second down and ten. One thing Robinson's enjoyed the luxury of this afternoon is having an offensive line that can really protect him, and, he, and he's been throwing the ball really uh, with not much pressure, it doesn't seem like, from up here. And uh, Sanford hasn't had that luxury for most of the afternoon, but the last couple passes I believe Barad threw, or the last one, he had a lot of time to throw that time. But Barad is kind of your two-minute drill quarterback. He just comes out there and just leads the charge like the game is on the line. And incomplete pass at the 40-yard line in and out of the hands of Roland Cody, number 88. Barad had him hit on the hands just inside the 40-yard line, but Cody couldn't hold on. So Barad seems to be better when he throws on the run, Raj, and when he just stands in the pocket. Yeah, he really threaded that pass because it was good coverage down there by Thorn Academy. A lot of people in the area, but uh, so the ball had to be thrown very precisely to hit Cody, really hit him in the hands. Uh, Cody unable to hang on, unfortunately, for Sanford. But uh, it's certainly not Barad's fault. He's giving it uh, his best attempt out there. With eight minutes left, uh, we have a third down and ten, and the fans uh, give a lot of applause here to the uh, TA cheerleaders who are going through some rather interesting routines. Passes uh, in and out of the hands of uh, Jason Sullivan, and now they're calling it a completion, are they? Yeah. I believe what they're calling, if from here it looks like incomplete, but I think what the officials is when his knees hit down, he had the ball in possession, and that's a dead ball when your knees hit. So he did not fumble it when he was up in here. That's the only thing I could figure what they call. Otherwise, it should be ruled an incomplete pass, but I believe that's what they... They ruled, and I don't see very much arguing on the Thorn side, so that has got to be the rule. Okay, Andy. Well, the uh, completion is uh, good for five yards and still forces uh, TA, I'm sorry, forces Sanford into a fourth down uh, situation. Fourth and five, they have to go. There's no choice, certainly. They're down by 14 points. They've got to do something here. And Barad is smashed, uh, driven down hard by Giroux who forces the fumble, and the ball is uh, being uh, battled for further downfield. Barad is getting up very, very slowly. He was hammered by Bobby Giroux, who's had a sensational game here this afternoon. The ball is, is picked up by Thorne Academy and is, uh, goes over into their hands at the at Sanford 43-yard line. What a hit by Bobby Giroux playing both ways today and doing a sensational job for Thorne Academy. Just a tremendous hit, and uh, Barad is still feeling the impact of that. He's, be, he's being carried off the field. I'm not sure if it's his ribs or his hand or his arms. He's holding just about every part of his body that he can hold right now. He just never saw him coming, and Giroux was trying to check out what size helmet that Barad was wearing because he just rocked him, and the ball sits on the 43-yard line of Sanford. Inside handoff to Susie, I believe, and... He should get about a couple of yards before being nailed. Thornton might be just content now on running the football with seven minutes to go and counting. They have a 21-7 lead, and with Giroux 
and also Susie. They just may be contented with running and grinding this football game out. Oh, no doubt about that. Dick Agresti is uh, looking very healthy at this point, and he knows it. He's got 640 remaining in this ball, ball game. His team is playing well. He's nursing a 14-point lead, and uh, he has all the um, everything going his way. Dave Robinson on the option decides to carry the ball himself. We'll get down inside the 40 to the 30, oh, 38 yard line. So we set up a third down and let's say about five yards to go as the clock continues to run down. The uh, plays continue to be shuffled in by the halfbacks for uh, Yep. Thorn Academy with the ball. Handoff inside and a lot of running room. And a lot of the running just being done by the by the sheer determination of, of Bobby Giroux, who drives in for the 27 and first down. Okay, the handoff again. Bobby Giroux with more running room. And again, the big fullback powering down inside the 15-yard line. Getting close to the 13-yard line on that play. A gain of another 15 yards or so. A great run by Giroux, and he's doing it on his own. The offensive line is... Out of the power eye formation, going for everything they can inside. And uh, Susie is going to get it down to the 10. And Thornton continues to just grind this ball down the field with 5'10 uh, remaining now. Dave Robinson is getting the call from his coach. Going in now to call the play. Ball is squarely at the 10 yard line with a second and uh, an eight to go. It's possible to get another first down without scoring from this position. Splits his people wide, has, uh, has Bob Giroux carrying the ball inside the five yard line. And we'll go down to about the four, gain of six on the play. Giroux is just a workhorse right now. Well, Giroux has gained uh, about 30 yards on his last three runs, just an amazing offensive and defensive ball play. I think he's put Barad maybe out of commission for a while on the sidelines, and then he came on the offensive side and decided to rush for 30 more yards, bruising a, a couple more opponents in the, uh, as we saw Boissonot leave the game number 72. So the Sanford players have had their feathers ruffled a few times, but that time Giroux finds the uh, going a little rough as the whole uh, left side of the defensive front for Sanford. Ted Cook and also number 10. That's uh, Danny Laprise who helped out Giroux. Uh, stopping them, it'll be fourth down and one yard for a first down. The ball is located at about the three yard line. They have to get just inside the three for a first down. Big fourth down play. Yeah, big fourth down play as TA hands it off to Bobby Giroux who powers in for the touchdown. Well, the fans love it, and they have every right to. Thorn Academy coming through with their fourth touchdown of the afternoon. And this one was done on the back of, the, of a great ball carrier named Bob Giroux. 
who with all poetic justice drives in and gets the touchdown himself after doing all the work to get it there. Paul Tate getting ready for the extra point. The kick is fake. Robinson throws and completes the pass in the end zone to, um, is that Mike Tarbox? Yes, indeed, for the two-point conversion. And our score with three minutes and 29 seconds left. Well, hold on, gang. We have a, uh, we have a flag being thrown now. And let's see what uh, the call is. It's against TA for something or other. Rather than the go for the uh, the kick, they attempted a two-point conversion. It looked good. The pass was complete to Tarbox, but uh, it's all being come called back, and the Trojans will have to do it all over again. Some kind of procedure call, I'm sure. It's a five-yard penalty. And the officials continue to talk it over. It's now 27 to seven at, as we get ready to see what uh, TA will decide to do now in their second attempt at uh, the conversion. The officials continue to discuss something or other on the, the field. Robinson is talking to Agresti, trying to get instructions. And no instructions are forthcoming. <laughs> I don't know what the refs are discussing out there. Probably where they're going to have lunch or dinner after the game. Well, well, who's going to chaperone the homecoming tonight, maybe, or whatever. But 329 remains in this fourth quarter. It's all but put away. 27-7 to 7 would take a major miracle uh, for Sanford, really, to come back. It would have to be three touchdown plays in a matter of three and a half minutes to go. And this one was very doubt doubtless. And Thornton Academy thus far, judging by what, by the games that have been played so far, has to be the most impressive Class A team, as we've mentioned, along with Biddeford. Biddeford has won a couple games in overtime, but uh, Thornton Academy just about blown every opponent away. Basically, they they beat Westbrook pretty bad. They now are in the process of uh, handing Sanford a pretty big defeat. They went to South Portland under the lights. South Portland had everything going for them, playing good ball, new lights and everything. And uh, their second game under the lights, and T.A. did a fine job. Thornton Academy will kick off as something about a loss of down. Okay, the play stands dead, 27-7 to the score. The play is just automatically dead, so it's 27 to seven with 329. Thorn Academy will be kicking off and we're gonna be taking a break and we'll be right back after this break. Okay, back here to complete our fourth quarter. Our score is 27 to seven in favor of Thorne Academy. The uh, kick is coming down, being fielded by Laprise, number 10, and he's being uh, racked up right there at the 20 yard line. Well, it's been a good day for TA. They've got things really rolling in their favor at this point. Up by 20 points with only three minutes and 23 seconds left. And uh, this has been a good one for the Golden Trojans. It really has been. Like we continue to say, they're a very impressive ball club. They are for real, and they played some good teams to prove it. They will play another good team, I believe, next week. I believe in Lewiston. Next, next ball game they will play. Sanford High coming in now with a new quarterback. I believe Laprise will be calling signals. Number 10 as Barad got his ruff, uh, feathers ruffled there by Giroux, who in suing uh, scored the touchdown on that, uh, on that drive after. Laprise going back, he's rolling out, cuts inside. He's gonna be getting some, some good running room and he does. He's being hit by three or four defenders. Another fumble and Thornton has it. 
And we'll see who comes up with it. The ball will be at the 35-yard line. Chris Summer, Roger says, has come up with the fumble recovery. Now Laprise is shaken up. That's about the fourth Sanford player that's just about been put out of commission right now. We saw Boissonneau get an injury earlier on the last series of downs. And uh, yeah, and he was, and Laprise was really popped that time by three or four ball players. And that's the third quarterback this afternoon for Sanford. Two of them have gone down because of injury. This being the second, uh, Barad was shaken up pretty good. And now Laprise is down right at the 35 with a fumble uh, was uh, where it happened. Got hit by at least three or four Thornton plays and Summer just happened to be the recipient of a football and didn't even have to join a raffle to get it, Raj. 2.54 to go in this fourth quarter. Despite what the scoreboard reads, it's 27 to seven. TA leads this one. And it will take over at the 35 yard line. Laprise is still down there attending to him. And uh, looks like Sanford will go to three and two. And Thornton will up its record to five and oh. It's bit if it draws a bye next week. So with a win, if Thornton does win their next game, they will be tied at six and oh. Boy, the local teams are doing it, aren't they? It's been a great season for everybody down here in York County. Um, our old Orchard Beach kids over the, down the way a little bit, they're playing uh, this afternoon. Uh, they were pretty heavily favored to win as well, uh, assuming that that comes out uh, the way they'd like. Our three uh, local teams that we do in this, uh, in this market, Bitterfield, Old Orchard Beach, Thorn Academy, will all be undefeated as we move into week number seven. Now well, Laprise is up and uh, walking off slowly with the help of uh, some assistance. And TA breaks out of the huddle, but they're uh, gonna have to wait a couple of seconds here as the boy finally gets off the field. All right, Thorn Academy with possession. They have a first and 10 at the Sanford 35 yard line. They lead 27 to seven with 252 and counting in this football game. Dave Robinson at quarterback out of the power eye formation. We expect to see the ball kept on the ground. Another fumble and now Sanford recovers. I can't wait to see who comes out to play quarterback. They've gone back to the original starter, Sean McCann, number nine, comes out to, to take over for uh, the Redskins. They have it at their own 36-yard line with a first down with now two and a half minutes left. Well, the fumbles have really been going both ways uh, this afternoon, and it's hard to figure why. It's a beautiful day, perfectly dry field. That could be why. Perfect weather. I mean, hit get some rain as the McCann just tees it up, going to Sullivan, over the shoulder catch, and no way. Ball hits on about the 35, and unfortunately for Sanford, Sullivan was on the 40 when it hit. So that's an incomplete pass, so McCann uh, gets another chance, starts, and looks like he might finish the ball game with 219 left in this one. Right now, as the score stands, 27 to seven. That's exactly what about the average is for Thornton's offense this year, is about 26, 27 points a game, averaging four, giving up about four points a game. That's not too shabby in Class A football or any, any division football you're in. So Thornton about to come out of homecoming very successful, avenging a 9-7 defeat of the hands of Sanford last year in Sanford. It's gonna feel good as McCann being rushed by Tarbox and overthrows his receiver. So two incomplete pass in a row, stops the clock, third and 10, 2.15 to go in the fourth quarter. Big rush that time by the academy. Of course, they know that every play, McCann is just gonna go back there and try to uh, unload someplace. And so those uh, linebackers and linemen are just uh, teeing off on every play, coming straight ahead. They're just uh, avoiding or just not even thinking run at all teeing off on the quarterback and McCann can be in a lot of trouble and I'm sure he knows it. Well, we have a third and ten and again McCann drops straight back and again the rush comes at him but he makes a nice pass to Sullivan who makes a couple of good moves himself and then is dragged down by Chris Summer who never gave up in the play. Sullivan will drive it out to the 45 and beyond and it'll be very very close to a first down. The referee has a uh, uh, marked it as a first down and the ball is be spotted just beyond the 46 yard line uh, Sullivan that time coming back over the middle to make the reception 
They've been trying to go deep on the outside consistently this afternoon, and that has had little success. I can remember only, in fact, one pass completion that really worked, uh, Sullivan. Uh, so now they're coming back over the middle. A little more difficult, but in this case, a little more successful. First down, McCann being rushed, and he avoids the one boy, goes down the sideline, now he's driven out of bounds as he crosses the 50-yard line, gets down to the TA 46, a uh, gain of about eight yards or so, and it'll be a second down and uh, two yards. Well, that time, uh, quarterback McCann put a nice throwing fake on uh, Derek Stabinski, number 11, who was chasing him from the left defensive end, and uh, gained eight yards. A minute 32 to go, second down and three. He's got Sullivan way out to the left. We'll look for him maybe to go to Sullivan. That's who he does. Sideline pat, and Sullivan dives, and they rule no completion, and there is none because the ball scoops to uh, Tebow on the sidelines. It'll bring third down and three with a minute 28, and the clock stops. 27 to 7, TA leading as T.A. will go up 5-0 and and Sanford will dip to 3-2. and And every week, as the weeks approach playoff time, it looks more like a bit of a T.A. is what we've said all year long, uh, top two teams in the Class A football. Yes, sir, the top two teams. Number 14 down here is uh, John Garvin. He's split, and now Harry also goes in motion putting two men flooding this zone and they're going to throw to Harry overthrown out of bounds so we've got a fourth down and still those uh, two or three yards left question now is do you go short and try to get the first down and just use more time on the clock or do you uh, go deep again of course, 27 to seven, there isn't a heck of a lot you can do no matter what uh, your offensive uh, strategy is. Time remaining is 123 on the clock and McCann will just try to run forward and he's, he does get the first down, I believe. He did it more, <laughs> more because the Thornton defense ended up pushing in that direction. So, McCann, I believe, comes out of there with a first down. He does. The ball is at the 41-yard line, and the, the Redskins will snap into it very quickly. Pass coming down here, complete to number, number five, Danny. Danny Boulay in for the touchdown. Number five, Danny Boulay, getting behind the defender and in for the touchdown. So with one minute and six seconds left, Sanford is able to pick up six points here in this game, and our score is now 27 to 13. Well, that's kind of too bad because it uh, hurts the TA defensive statistics, but that's all it really does in this game. It accomplishes very little else. Um, the Sanford will go for the two-point conversion. McCann is throwing to the flat. And it's incomplete. So with 106 left, 27 to 13. Well, it'll go with about a 40-yard touchdown pass from McCann to Boulay, and uh, made a nice catch at about the 10-yard line to run it in with a minute six to go to bring uh, Sanford two touchdowns closer. But it just may be a not enough time as the score remains 27 to 13, two point conversion failed. And look for uh, definitely an onside kick, I would think, from Sanford. They're gonna have to pull out all the stops just to score two more times. That was Boulet, B-O-U-L-E-T, the, the uh, pass receiver is not, not just a number we haven't called this afternoon. Is a senior, however, and uh, picks up six points for Sanford today. Okay, 27-13 as we're getting ready for the kickoff. Thorn Academy brings everybody up close with the exception of one boy that they keep deep. That's Danny Gamash down around the seven yard line. They're anticipating an onside kick. I guess everybody's anticipating and there it is. It has to go 10 and I don't believe it did. I believe it went nine. And let's see what the officials call. The 
ball is short of the 50 yard line. They are discussing it. And we'll see what they decide to do. All right. The ball was down. Andy says they may get the football right down. I'm watching the clock running down here as the officials discuss this. It's now down to 33 seconds. The clock continued to run as the officials discuss this situation. And they continue to discuss the situation. They're going to be adding some more time on the clock because the clock continued to run. And the uh, word from the field is that we're going to go back to 48 seconds uh, as far as time is concerned on the clock. So uh, we'll wait a couple of minutes here as they reset that. And uh, Thorn Academy will take possession at the 49-yard line of uh, Sanford. I was under the impression that the ball had to go 10 yards, but it was downed, and uh, that was that. Originally, that's what I thought. Fans counting down kind of sarcastically, but <laughs> there's still going to be 48 seconds to go. And this one is they're going to have to re-put 48 seconds on the board. Thorn does take over, though, in Sanford's 49. That's what I thought. He, originally, the ball does have to go, I believe it's more than 10 yards. But Sanford uh, down the ball on the 49-yard line, and they ruled uh, Thornton's ball. So we'll look for Thornton to run out the clock with 48 seconds, I believe. As we see some Thornton players, some reserves now win. We'll try to pick up the new quarterback, is I believe number Trying to pick up the new quarterback. I believe it's Susie, Bill Susie, the punter. And Susie tries, there it is. Trying to play that he broke against Sanford. He just may go all the way. And he crashes through the defenders, and he does. Bill Susie, 49 yard touchdown run. Same play against Portland when he came in. Did that to Portland, 49 yard touchdown. Well, this one's not over. The scoring is not over. I mean, these teams are just going to say, we're going to throw our reserves in there and do some more scoring. We're just not done. So uh, breaking off a nice fake bootleg play by uh, Bill Soucy, who, all, who does the punting on the team. He's also the backup quarterback. Seems like every time I take the mic, Rods, to go play by play, somebody scores. I'm going to hand the mic to you because it's Sanford's ball. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, you've, you've, you've had a couple of them today. OK, Bill Soucy. All the way for the touchdown, 33 to 13. The kick is up. It is good. Paul Tate gets the extra point. Bill Susi puts up six. And the Thorn Academy just goes running out in front of this game, 34 to 13. With the resetting of the clocks and all the other good stuff going on over here, it's been really exciting. It's now 34 13 with 40 seconds left. And Thorn Academy on their way to a, another big win. I'll tell you, he broke a few tackles getting in that end zone, too. He did the same thing when he came in uh, against Portland and ran for about, I think it was an 11-yard play. Same type play, and this time it looked like maybe a 10-yard gainer, and then he just broke up the middle, ran over about two or three defenders, and he just kept busting through the uh, Sanford people. All the way for, adds up to a 49-yard touchdown run. 40 seconds to go. 40 seconds in the ball game. Tate kicking off 34 to 13. Thorn Academy well in command of winning this one. Big rivalry. Sanford now has lost two games with their rivals, 27 to nothing. And this one they trail 34 to 13. So this one, this uh, this year's rivalries have been all but very close, Raj. Sure have. Well, the kick was to. Uh Corona May, a sophomore, number 33, who brings the ball out to the 45-yard line. And uh, the clock is running down, and we're just about through here for this afternoon as McCann throws the ball deep and incomplete, intended for Jeff LaPierre. That'll stop the clock with 24 seconds. Now we have a penalty flag going down. 
We have a flag going down. I don't know what the call is. Looks like a holding call being uh, assessed against Thorn Academy. 34-13 again is the score with 24 seconds left. Ball is uh, going to be marked off from the 45-yard uh, line. And it's going to be 15 yards to the 40-yard line. We didn't get the call, but we know that it's a 15-yarder. McCann throwing deep, incomplete. Jason Sullivan was the intended receiver, but badly overthrown. A uh, couple of people down there with him, Billy Susie being one, and Terrell, number 21, being the other. Stops the clock again with 19 seconds left. This game has been over for some time, really, but now uh, it seems to, it just doesn't seem to want to end. <laughs> Another flag goes down, so it's not going to end here either. As McCann decides to run, Stabinski is uh, after him, but he runs out of bounds before he can be caught uh, in the area of the 15-yard line. But that flag could bring it all back. Yes, we have an illegal procedure call against Sanford with 10 seconds left, and it's all going to come back. So we'll wipe out the run by McCann and set the ball and back another five yards from the line of scrimmage. And uh, Sanford will have a second down now with 15 yards to go from the Thorn Academy 45-yard line. Ten seconds left. McCann's going to try it one more time. And again, he's being flushed out, fakes the pass, gets hit, goes down at the 36. Time has been called, however. Timeout has been called by Sanford with two seconds remaining. <laughs> this thing refuses to die, Andy. Yeah, they they, <laughs> they don't want to go back to Sanford is what it is. No, they 34-13. Uh, I, I believe they just want to throw the ball in the end zone and just hope that it ends up being something like 34-21, to 21, maybe a little more respectability, get all the points they can uh, before they leave. With two seconds left, it's totally impossible to get 21, so they're going to try for at least one more score. And you don't have to be uh, uh, Vince Lombardi to know what they're going to do, neither, because you know that McCann's going to go back and just throw in the end zone. Then it's all going to be academic, and we're all going home. 34-13, two seconds to go. Time enough for one more play. Sanford's throwing the ball up about 23 times, completed on seven passes this afternoon. And... McCann has about two passes that he completed, and Barad about five. Two seconds left. This will end it right here. Well, we hope this will end it right here <laughs> for everybody's sake. But it's been a happy, happy crowd here this afternoon. They've had a lot of fun. They've had every right to have a lot of fun. It's been a good homecoming for everybody. McCann is being flushed out again and finally is downed, and that ends our football game. Well, it's been a good one for our TA fans. They've really loved it. The bands have had a good time. The cheerleaders are bouncing around. Everybody's having a, a good afternoon. And uh, our final score from Paul S. Hill Stadium in Saco, Thorn Academy 34, Sanford 13. And Andy and I will be back with a little bit of talk right after this commercial break.
The post game show is being brought to you this afternoon by a whole host of sponsors, and I'm not going to bother mentioning them all. But uh, Andy and I are lucky enough to have a couple of the young men that seems that we talked about more than anybody else this afternoon from Thorn Academy. Uh, Bob Giroux, number 31, and Eric Benson, number 83. And Eric, we're going to call you our 12th player uh, today. You're going to get the uh, Menards uh, 12th player award. Just a sensational game. It's one of those games that years from now, you'll be talking to your uh, grandchildren, you'll be telling them all the fumble recoveries you did that day and the, uh, the work that happened and the touchdown you scored. And uh, we know it was eight yards, but you'll tell them it was 40 yards. And it'll get longer and better as time goes on. But this is one game that you'll remember a long, long time. You gotta be happy. <laughs> Very happy, yeah. We owed them one from last year, you know. They beat us in that uh, pass, 51 seconds left. And it's just great to beat them the way we did. No, 28 to 7 or whatever. Uh, you had, uh, was it three fumble recoveries, I think, this afternoon? Uh, you were in their backfield more than the LaPierre, and uh, the uh, touchdown, of course, was, uh, was a great one. Uh, you had to be thinking about this one all week. Oh, yeah, we, uh, we had to buy, and we've been pairing for Sanford for two weeks. You know, that's all we've been thinking about. And we've had some real tough practices because we won this one, you know, because they beat us two years in a row. You know, the year before that, they beat us at homecoming, 7 0, and then last year, you know, that. Last second win, you know, we just we had to win this one. Yeah, the playoffs too, you know. We did that game last year. We remember it well. It was at Sanford and it was a heartbreaker at the finish. Uh, Andy, how about uh, talking to uh, old Bobby? <laughs> through through the helmet gear here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Bobby Giroux, just an outstanding offensive and defensive play. We don't stop talking enough about you know Bob's play. Uh, on the offense and the defense. What I want to know is when you, when you play defense, does it help your offensive uh, play also, the way you hit on defense? Does it make you more of a, a stronger hitter? Well, when the defense has good play, it really sparks the offense up, and they come out there ready to run and drive, and that's what we have to do, get the offense going most of the time. Usually when you get a good defensive and offensive player that plays you know both ways, plays it well, I can almost guess you, play, you, you like playing defense better. Oh, yeah, for sure. For some reason, they, you know, the yards are nice, but you like making that solid hit. And I know you hit Barad pretty hard on about midfield. And he was still holding his body when he was leaving uh, the field after the game. Uh, and I know you've had numerous hits like that. Uh, what do you think the, 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 the turning point? They, they came out as 14-0, then they came in 14-7. What do you think sparked uh, this, this club to, you know? Uh, when I had the hit on number seven, yeah. and we fumbled, they fumbled, and I got the ball, that really sparked it up for yeah. us and turned us around. Really, because we mentioned that drive was a real important drive for Thorne because Sanford seemed to have some momentum going, and then yeah. that hit and the fumble recovery and everything else just seemed to to bring you guys back up 21-7. Then it was seemed like it was over. Yeah, I wanted number seven from uh, last year. He was <laughs> yeah. the one of, he's the guy that came in the last yeah. seconds through the Hail Mary there. Yeah. That's right. I he didn't have much time to throw it this afternoon, did he? No, didn't want him to either. Just an outstanding ball game uh, by both you guys. Now, next week, you have Lewiston yep. in Lewiston. Uh, I believe, Friday night game. Your thoughts about going into Lewiston? Uh, I've only played them once, JV game, and uh, we pulled that one off with no time left. I hope we can do it again. Let me guess now. I mean, nobody's going to know but about 30,000 viewers, okay? Just between us and 30,000 viewers. You guys looking ahead to Biddeford? Oh, uh, we want them <laughs> twice this year, twice. Oh, yeah. That's right, twice. Twice. They want them twice, and they just might get them twice the, the way both these teams are playing. Yeah, exactly right. They're gonna. I think they're gonna get him twice. Okay, so you have uh, Lewiston next week. Then what? Deering, yeah. I believe, down the line, and Deering home. Yeah. And finally, Biddeford. And Biddeford has played where this year? Right. At Biddeford. And that's that. Uh, well, as far as we know, uh, as we do this game this afternoon, you know, we keep talking about the three schools that we do. Uh, you two schools, obviously, in Old Orchard Beach. Everybody's undefeated, so uh, somebody's doing something right around here. And uh, you guys are certainly uh, a credit to Thorne Academy. We thank you very much, guys, for coming this afternoon. I know you have to get in and get a shower. Thanks again, and uh, we'll follow you the rest of the way. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Okay, Andy, how about uh, some stats?
should be interesting. They should be interesting, is right. 180 yards rushing for TA, 80 yards in the air. Robinson was 5 of 12, two touchdown passes. Rushing Bobby Giroux had 71 yards. Susie on one carry, 49 yards, yeah. I think became their second leading rusher in the afternoon. 40 yards by Susie. All tough yards, too, between Giroux and. Uh, and uh, Giroux and Susie, as we hear the victory bell in the background, I think Giroux and uh, Eric want to be part of that, yeah, so they're running, they're scooting run on over there. As uh, Sanford's rushing wise, they had 102 yards on the ground, and they threw the ball up seven for 23 times, had seven completions, one touchdown pass for 96 yards. So they had about 198 yards of total offense, and uh, Thornton Academy, 260. But I think the most important things was uh, the fumbles, yeah, they, they were a big part of it, but I think it was the hits that happened on the fumble. They did put two or three ball players just about out of commission with Barad, as Bobby hit Barad, and I saw Buesno limp off into the end. Laprise uh, got banged up a little bit. Very physical ball club, and uh, I tell you, these other teams have to be looking at Thornton and saying, you know, they're they're just a bunch of physical hitters, and they're going to be a team to definitely reckon with. And and to me, you know, they've got a good shot being Biddeford Thornton for the state championship. Well, it's all headed in that direction, and we'll be there to do it, and we can't wait. It should be a real good, good one for us. I guess that wraps it up this afternoon, Andy, from uh, Paul S. Hill Stadium. We had a good time. We certainly hope you did, too. Roger Payne Show, Andy Poirier, will be back next week with another BT Video Sports presentation. Gary Savage has been our carryman again this afternoon. We thank him, and we'll be with you again next week. Bye-bye.